Stadium in Houston. From the Legacy Sports Network, this is Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. Tonight, it's the finale of the BBVA Compass Kickoff Classic as the Cy Woods Wildcats take on the Klein Collins Tigers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BBVA Compass Stadium along with Brent Moody and Jarrell Branch. I'm Michael Silvers, delighted to have you with us. Both Cy Woods and Klein Collins were playoff teams just a season ago, but they both suffered early round exits. And as they prepare for their season openers tonight, Brent Moody, 2012, both teams have very high expectations. Well, they have really high expectations, but what they really want to find out tonight is get really tuned up for their district campaign, but also figure out what guys are going to step into those leadership roles, guys that were on sub-varsity or didn't get much playing time last year. They really get to use this non-district uh, campaign to try to see who's going to contribute this season. The quarterback situation for both schools, we have a couple of seniors. For Cy Woods, he was number two last year. He's now stepped into the number one role, Nate German, and for Klein Collins, they'll install Blake Jackson. Yeah, Nate German is a big physical quarterback, and the thing is that we saw him a couple times last year, and he knows how to run the spread offense very well, so we're very excited to see him. Also, Blake Jackson, he actually jumped Jared Huber in the offseason. You make your name in the offseason, and he'll be replacing Tyler Staling, who's at Rice this year. When we return, we continue to count down to kickoff. We'll welcome in the fourth member of our broadcast team, Jay Darneal. And it's all coming your way next as we continue from BBVA Compass Stadium here on Fox Sports Southwest. Double-digit pay raises are history. Now money's a lot harder to get a hold of and even harder to hang on to. That's why I, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson, would like to offer you a free discount double check. I will go through your car insurance policy to make sure you are getting the discounts you deserve and aren't leaving any money on the table. So call me, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson in Houston, because being there to help keep more of your money in your pocket is why I'm here. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Result-oriented, responsible, and reputable. Those are just a few of the words that could be used to describe Metter Staffing, one of Houston's largest staffing services. Metter has gained a superior reputation over the past four decades, serving Houston's employers, providing all types of direct hire, contract, contract to hire, temporary, and temp to hire job candidates. If you have a job to fill or looking for a job, call Metter Staffing at 713-941-0616. Follow Metter on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Metter Staffing, they know the people you need to know. You a fanatic? Open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit union of the Houston Texans. And we welcome you back to BBVA Compass Stadium. Week zero Saturday night here in Houston and a great way to cap it off as the Klein Collins Tigers meet the Cy Woods Wildcats in a non-district showdown. Klein Collins come out onto the field. They are the home team in this neutral setting. Last season they finished eight and three under head coach Drew Svoboda. Lost to the Woodlands in the by district round of the 2011 postseason. And, guys, we were on hand for that game. They had a lead in the second half, but they just weren't able to sustain it, and they were dispatched out of the postseason by the Woodlands Highlanders. It just really seemed like they relied too much on uh, a couple of guys. They didn't have a lot of depth, and once they figured out how to stop those guys, it was pretty much over. 23 returning lettermen, 35 left and graduated. Predicted to finish third in 13-5A by Texas football, but locally the Houston Chronicle has them finishing second. And when you, guys, when, you guys, when you have guys up front on the offensive line, a couple of D1 commits, Tyler Tizino, the left guard, committed to West Virginia back in June, and Chance Allen, who committed to Kansas State on May 1st. Jarrell, you could have a lot of success up front with those two guys leading the way. You know, it actually just, you rally around success like that because of the fact that, I mean, these guys are going to huge schools, they're going to D1 schools, and your team embraces that. And so when you have people like that on your team, you want to play that much better because you know that you have the right people. Cy Woods last season, they finished 
eight and three, excuse me, nine and three, lost to Katie in the area round and got a good learning experience. And they have a new head coach this season, Trent Faith, a defensive minded coach. He spent many years at Side Creek under head coach Greg McKaig as his defensive coordinator. A little bit of philosophy changes, but not too much, Brent. Yeah, not too much philosophy change. He uh, really kind of tried to stick with the same offense. He's really trusting in his offensive coordinator, really trying to uh, bring a new name to the defense over at Cy Woods. And, trusting his offensive coordinator to make the right calls. We told you how Klein Collins was picked to finish second by uh, Texas Foot, or excuse me, by the Houston Chronicle and third by uh, Texas Football. When you look on the other side, you have Cy Woods. They're predicted to finish third as well in 17-5A and second by the Houston Chronicle. And 17-5A, like 13-5A, very tough district. Yeah, these districts are, I mean, they're just powerhouses. And if you can come out the district and actually make the playoffs, that's why these big schools come and recruit these kids, because they know how difficult it is to make it through into the first round. We'll step aside. When we return, we will have the opening kickoff to this matchup here between the Klein Collins Tigers and the Cy Woods Wildcats. This is kickoff week, presented by First Community Credit Union, and this is Fox Sports Southwest. Life is a road you travel with many destinations, like college for the kids, a new house, and retirement. I am Earl Thompson, your neighborhood State Farm agent, and I can do more than ever to guide you with a State Farm insurance and financial review. You'll get a clear picture of where you stand now and a way to help you plan for where you want to be. Visit me on the web, earlthompson.biz, to schedule your free insurance and financial review. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. footage was captured at a local grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There, he just got 10 cents back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. How about an ale? Bigger. No, no, no. Bigger still. Ah. It's good to be king. This fall, experience king-size dining, shopping, merriment, and more at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Discount tickets are on sale now at Randall's, Walgreens, Wood Forest National Bank, and online at texrenfest.com. The Texas Renaissance Festival. Choose your own adventure. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Dynamo Stadium, home of Major League Soccer and the Houston Dynamo. But tonight, as was the case last night, the setting for some high school football here in the city of Houston as we conclude week zero, the Klein Collins Tigers and the Cy Woods Wildcats. Time now for our keys to the game. Brent, I'll start with you. 
Oh, really like it is in any football game. you got to win the battle up front and the line of scrimmage, and uh, special teams is really going to come into effect in this game. With the weather, if we have some more rain, it really could affect the kicks. Yeah, it did rain earlier on today, and we may see some scattered showers here in the forecast. Drill, what are your thoughts? I'm really excited to see how Blake Jackson's going to come in. He came off the junior varsity team last year, took over the role of uh, starting quarterback, and I really want to see how he's going to manage and control the game. Captains are going to meet at midfield. Klein Collins are in blue. Cy Woods will be in white tonight. Run down the District 13 5A standings after Thursday and Friday. Atascacita with their win over Doby are 1 0. Westfield with a big win over Aldine 43 7. They are 1 0. What, what about the game at Klein Memorial Stadium last night? 63 to 56 in overtime. Klein Oak defeats Langham Creek in another 13 versus 17 5A showdown. DeCaney playing tonight as they will take on straight Jesuit up at George Stadium in spring, the defending Class 5A Division II state champions. Ironically, in their first and only so far playoff appearance, Trey Williams and company were able to get the were able to win the state championship hey, over Michael. Cibolo Steel. Michael. Yes, sir. Hey, sorry to cut you off there. Got Coach Boda really quick here. Uh, Coach, get, get to play in such a huge game at an amazing stadium like this. Talk about your emotions. Well, it's just keeping the emotions in check is probably the biggest thing for us and all the kids. It's an unbelievable stadium and what a great opponent. The first game of the year has got enough, uh, uh, enough stuff that comes with it. So we're excited. We're ready for this football to be kicked. Appreciate the time, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jay. And Kingwood, Klein, Spring, Klein Forest all losing here in week zero in District 17 5A. Not a lot of activity for the Cy Fair schools this week. Cy Falls with a shutout victory over Oak Ridge. They're 1 0. Cy Ranch losing here last night to Cinco Ranch in the first half of this BBVA Compass kickoff classic. Langham Creek, we'd mentioned the overtime loss they suffered at Klein Memorial Stadium over uh, against Klein Oak. And Cy Springs losing on Thursday. Cy Fair will be taking on Katy Taylor out at Road Stadium in Katy. Idle this week are Cy Creek, Jersey Village, Cy Ridge, and Cy Lakes. Our referee tonight is Scott Johnson. It is humid down there, 92 degrees at game time. It'll dip a little bit, and scattered showers are in our forecast. Cy Woods will receive the opening kickoff. Sam Stewart is back deep to receive. And he will be paired back there by Mason Roberts. Rhett Peterson will tee the ball up at the 40-yard line. Klein Collins had won the uh, coin flip, but deferred to the second half. Rhett Peterson was the place kicker last season, now a senior for the Tigers. New rule this season, if Rhett Peterson kicks it out of the end zone and it's a touchback, Cy Woods will begin on the 25. That rule is not in place if a punt goes for a touchback. Rhett Peterson, a lefty. And this game is underway. End over end kick. And it will bounce in the end zone. Cy Woods will take control, begin on offense first, and they'll have it on the 25 as we take a look at their starting offensive lineup. Nate German is the quarterback. Completed just under 50% of his passes last season, was 33 of 67 for 715 yards and seven touchdowns. Committed to play D1 ball at Rice back on June 29th. And you take a look at what they have up front. Logan Riordan is the center. We flanked to the left by Brett Bryan, Muhammad El Zibde to his right, Jordan Woodard, and Trevor Rogis are the tackles. Some last minute instructions to the offense from offensive coordinator Curtis Neal. First year head coach for Cy Woods is Trent Faith. Klein Collins will begin with three down defensive linemen in a 3 4 formation. Roberts in motion on first down and 10 from the 25. 
On the zone read, a handoff. It is Stewart to the right side. And Stewart has the Ooh. ball knocked out, but it goes out of bounds as he crosses the 30 and reaches the 31-yard line for a six-yard run. That was Derek Thomas on the hit. Just like he got his helmet right in there. The ball went flying out. That was a good job of Stewart uh, trying to hit that corner and get around. It looked like there was a defensive player in the backfield, but he was able to avoid him to get the yardage. Stewart at 769 yards as a sophomore on the ground and eight touchdowns last season. Begins out of the shotgun. German throws. It is complete across the 40-yard line and stopped at the 44-yard line. Nick Hooper, a sophomore, on the reception and a first down. Nick Hooper did a great job of just coming up and, and squatting to go ahead and make that catch and then to get upfield and get those extra yards after the catch. Good job of covering the ball. Good for a first down on a 14-yard pickup. First down and 10 for Cy Woods. They'll scrimmage on the 44. And all sorts of confusion and a bunch of flags fly. Stewart eventually got the ball, but there was all sort of traffic thanks to the front three of the Klein Collins Tigers. I think Isaiah Bird was leading the way. It should have been a hold there on Cy Woods as well. There was so much going on on that play. Got to credit the penetration of the defensive front of Klein Collins. And you know what? That was actually the same play that they ran the first time, and, and they had a lot of penetration on that play. Scott Johnson, our referee. Penalties will offset as you have a hold on Cy Woods and then offsides on Klein Collins. And I guess that's why they were able to get that penetration in the backfield. So they'll replay first down. Cy Woods last season averaged 448.33 yards per game of total offense. Racked up 5,380 yards of total offense in 2011, which saw them be defeated by the Katy Tigers in the area round. On first down and 10, German will throw. Screens it, Stewart, and that's well scouted. Leading the way, Derek Thomas, and a loss back to the 37-yard line. He threw that ball behind Sam Stewart, and he had to make a play to come back to it. Just that slight hesitation to get to the ball was enough for Klein Collins to get over there and make a play defensively. Yeah, but Klein Collins was there. I mean, they had at least three people surrounded by him. Timeout taken by Cy Woods. We'll step aside early, 10.40 to play. Here at Dynamo Stadium in the first quarter, no score. you're needing to hire personnel, then you need to talk with Matter Staffing Services. Matter Staffing has been in business for over four decades and is one of the largest staffing services in the Houston area, servicing a national market. Matter Staffing has specialists wanting to serve you in the areas of engineering, accounting, administrative support, industrial, IT, marketing, and many other job categories. They have seven locations to serve your staffing needs. Call 713-941-0616 and they can direct you to the office nearest you. Matter Staffing on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. No score here from BBVA Compass Stadium early on here in the first quarter of this non-district affair to start off week zero. Here in the greater Houston area, Cy Woods face now with second down and 20 from their own 37-yard line. Roberts comes in motion. Play fake to him. Over the middle, the pass is complete. David Burrell, the senior on the reception, Close to midfield on a pass play of around six or seven yards, maybe give him 14 yards. And Derek Thomas seemed to have come clean, and Nate German stood in there in the pocket, and stepped up big, made a nice throw to get them to a third down and manageable. First third down of the game for Cy Woods. And Stewart trying to get to the edge on the right side, speeds around the corner, dives. It'll depend on the spot, and from here, it looks like he has a first down. Gain of seven for Sam Stewart and a first down for Cy Woods. That's just one heck of an effort by Stewart to go and have that fight and get the first down because really, Klein Collins did a great job of getting in the backfield once again. 
Cy Woods will scrimmage from the Klein Collins 45 yard line, first and 10. Three receivers, bottom of your screen. German goes through his perse oh, progressions and he is tackled from behind, dropped in the backfield by Derek Thomas and he has made his impression felt early here in the first quarter. Yeah, also Sam Stewart, he has to be careful, make sure that he doesn't move early before the ball snapped. As long as he doesn't move forward, he should be okay. Loss of eight yards on the sack. They've been coming free on that left side, both Derek Thomas and Isaiah Bird. Just and see, that's that difficulty of the spread offense sometimes. You don't know who to block at times. Second down, and we've got flags. I think 62, the center jump. False start called. That drops Cy Woods back even further. Defensively last season, Klein Collins weren't just a juggernaut, but could not get past mm. the Woodlands Highlanders in the first round. And Sam Stewart breaks down the left sideline, back in Tiger territory and out of bounds at the 38-yard line, where he's angled out by Gary Bryce, starting as one of the linebackers in this linebacking core of the Klein Collins Tigers. Sam Collins does it. Sam, he does such a great job of just getting outside and following his block, he was very patient and hesitant and hit it hard. Another third down, and German lost one over the middle out of the reach of Nick Hooper, and that brings up fourth down. That's a tough one right there. I know that's one that uh, German, Nate German, would love to have back because he was wide open. On that last play where Sam Stewart picked up the big chunk of yards, it looked like Jeremy Winchester had a perfect line to the ball carrier. And and as we were down there in pregame, we noticed the ground was pretty hard, and Jeremy Winchester just lost his footing. That's how Samuel Stewart was able to pick up that huge chunk of yards. We talked with head coach Trent Faith. He said this could very well be four down territory. But as you see, Nate German with an end over end kick as he comes behind, as he walks behind his quarterback's position and executes a punt that goes into the end zone. So a 37 yard punt, but only a 17 yard punt net for German and we'll see the Klein Collins offense come out on the field for the first time. Their offensive coordinator is Adrian Mitchell. Blake Jackson is the quarterback, senior. Leapfrog over Jared Huber who was the backup quarterback last season under Tyler Staling who's now at Rice University. We'll get a look at their starting lineup after this first play as they run out of the pistol formation. Jarius Bishop is just off the left shoulder of the quarterback Jackson and he'll get the call trying to go straight ahead and nowhere to go. Take that, that was uh, Marcus Goodson getting the carry, number three, and Jordan Cipriani, the senior defensive end on the tackle on the loss of a yard as you take a look at our McDonald's starting lineups for the Klein Collins offense. Marcus Goodson's gonna be somebody, they're gonna call his number throughout the evening. He's one of the most athletic kids out there on the field. Second down and 11, ball on the 19. Jackson fires to the right side, and that is off the hands of Jordan Thomas, his junior receiver. Coverage on the play from Andrew Pruitt. And it is third down quickly for the Tigers. He did a good job of dropping back. Looks like the ball just kind of got out of his hand a little, little high. And yeah, and your defense didn't give up any points on the last drive, but they were on the field for a while. You don't want to go three and out and have them back out on the field in this terrible field position. you got to move the sticks. Third down and 11. Inside screen and an off-target throw by Blake Jackson. Intended for Josh Parrison and three and out for this Tiger offense, not the start they wanted. If Deon the excuse me, Mike. If, if DeAndre A. Davis has his head looking at the quarterback, he would have had a pick on that play. And Brent, you're absolutely correct. I mean, that defense, they did a great job out there on the field, but they were out there for a long time. Joe Shreve to execute the punt. Chase Ragusa will look to return it, but they punt it away from him. Then he scoops it up on one hop and gets mm. swallowed at the 37-yard line.
44-yard punt. And 8.07 to play here in the first quarter. No score. And Sidewoods will come back on offense for the second time. They'll scrimmage from their own 37-yard line. Face a three-man front from this Tiger defense. A mm. couple of collisions. German may just have to eat this one as he basically improvs his way to the left-hand side and is ran out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A loose, uh, about a loss of three there. And tailbacks just ran into each other, and Sam Stewart seems to be shaken up from it. He's going to trot off the field. We'll be checking in with the Klein Collins defense. Right after this play, as we are inside eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. German out of the shotgun, flag is down, passes Ooh. over the middle, and getting lit up, Mason Roberts, but he holds on. We'll have to check the marker, the hit applied by Frankie Griffin, the free safety, a junior for the Tigers. Frankie Griffin puts a perfect hit. Yeah, he came in and hit him right. I mean, he saw what he was hitting. He didn't spear him or lead with his head anything. That was just a great hit. And the penalty is onside Woods. So you negate the yards gained, but you still feel the hit. <laughs> I think that might be a double whammy. And there's a look at the Klein Collins defense presented by McDonald's. Got an experienced secondary, and that's what Drew Sabota was really high on when we talked to him before the game got underway tonight. Right, and they're going to be all over the field. And it really seemed like that's what affected them deep in the playoffs, that they were so young in the secondary. But you're just uh, getting them ready as they get a little older, become upperclassmen. Second down and 20 here for Cy Woods. On the play fake, German in trouble, and he will be dropped back inside the 20-yard line. Looks like 8 and 44, Eric Parsons and Casey Massey. Massey, a junior, outside linebackers. We take another look. And you can tell German's looking down the field, going through his progressions, and that's why it took him so long to even realize there was so much pressure on him because he's going through his progressions down the field. He's doing a good job of hanging in the pocket, but... The offensive line, they're just not holding their blocks long enough. Looking at about a third down and 31. The uh, public address announcer must be used to going doing soccer because he just said third down and a uh, long way to go. <laughs> Play fake pass over the middle through the hands of Mason Roberts. May have uh, felt the footsteps of an oncoming Frankie Griffin and realized he didn't want to get plastered again. Hey, that's a hit you don't want to take. Incomplete pass brings up fourth down. You don't get up from two of those in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way Frankie Griffin can hit, and he's only a junior. Five seniors, six juniors in the starting lineup defensively for Klein Collins, opposite five seniors, five juniors, and a sophomore in the starting lineup for Cy Woods. Nate German doubles up as the punter. This one not the best of kicks. We'll see where they mark it out of bounds at. But no matter how you slice it, the Klein Collins Tigers are going to have excellent field position as they will start on the Wildcat 16, or excuse me, the 35. That is a 16-yard punt by Nate German. An excellent field position as Klein Collins will start in Wildcat territory. It's not going to matter how good their field position is if they are as ineffective on offense as they were at the first possession. They went absolutely nowhere and didn't seem like they were even on the same page. I think you got to get the ball into, into their playmaker, Mike Goodson's hands. Excuse me, Marcus Goodson. Comes from the Goodson family. Michael, then uh, Dimitri, now Marcus. Michael, I believe, is still in the National Football League. He is Carol, no, Oakland. 6.50 remaining here in quarter number one. Harrison in motion, a little confusion. A keeper now for Jackson off the left side. And he'll reach the 36-yard line as he picks up. Check that, he'll uh, reach the 31-yard line, a pickup of four. You can definitely tell it's week zero going on here with all the confusion in the backfield. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of offensive linemen missing blocks. And Well, we asked Coach uh, Soboda to draw some comparisons between Jackson and the preceding quarterback who started as uh, two-year starter, Tyler uh, Staling. He said it's just height. Pass right side is complete inside the 25, hauled in by Mikey Tanner, who had Two catches all of last season, an average 9.5 yards a catch. 
But we'll take another look at this delivery from Jackson. That's a good strike. Good job to look the ball in. 13-yard pass play. First down for Klein Collins. On the side, Woods, 23-yard line. Pump fake and a handoff. Goodson, left side, has room across the 20. And is tackled by Kendrick Jacobs inside the red zone at the 17-yard line. Six yards for Mar Marcus Goodson. Kind of indecisive. He didn't seem like he wanted to either run around him or run over him and just ended up running right into the defense. He did a good job of sliding that thing outside because the hole was supposed to be inside. And then actually before he saw that huge gap on the outside before he even got the ball. Second down and four. Klein Collins will scrimmage from the Wildcat 17. And a handoff this time. It is Bishop. Bishop drugged down from behind by senior linebacker Xavier Banks right at the line of scrimmage. Tries to kick it out to the side, but great lateral movement by the defense yeah. to just not give him the edge. Third down and five for the Tigers. Bishop, a senior, was not on the varsity team last season, played on the, ju uh, the uh, junior varsity. And on third down and five, Jackson. That one throw might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage, intended for Jordan Thomas, and that brings up fourth down. It looked like it just got away from him. I don't think anybody got a hand on it. Just kind of rushed that throw. Yeah, it hit the, looked like it hit an offensive lineman and defensive lineman. Field goal unit will come out here. Both coaches said that they are, were pretty comfortable letting them kick from about 40. This one will be lined up for a 35-yard attempt. By the lefty, Rhett Peterson. Kick is on its way. And it is wide right. So Cy Woods will hold. And we are still scoreless with 435 remaining here in the first quarter. Next Thursday on the FoxSportsSouthWest.com Game of the Week, presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. It's a special Thursday night edition. And we'll come your way live from Leonard George Stadium in spring for a week one non-district matchup between the 0-1 Spring Lions and the 1-0 Deer Park Deer. Our coverage will begin at 645 here on Fox Sports Southwest. Wildcats come out for possession number three. Their first possession was better than their second. They went backwards in possession number two. Four receivers deployed for German. And he will throw a lofter up the right sideline out of the reach of his intended target, Nick Hooper, who has one catch tonight. But a couple of times, German has failed to locate him. In pregame, he was hitting them right on stride, and nobody was catching the ball for him. Now he's got guys wide open down the field, and he just can't seem to get them the ball. German began his night three for three. has now thrown two straight incomplete passes. He is three of five for 21 yards in this first quarter. And on second down and 10, a play fake and a low pass that is scooped up by Mason Roberts. May have lost a yard, lost just, his footing on the grass. They're just really out of sync right now. That first possession that they had, they seem to be doing so well. That ball just got a little low. And like Brent was saying earlier, this field is really, really hard. And we kept talking about earlier, before, as we were walking the field, how many people were going to see slip out here as well. It rained throughout the afternoon here in Houston. And on third down, German avoids a sack, scrambles to his right, throws on the run, and he throws it away. He's in the direction of Chase Ragusa. Ragusa, a senior, had 336 yards receiving last season and three touchdowns, but another three and out. Cy Woods will punt it away. Initial penetration pushing the quarterback out of the pocket was Eric Parsons, who's just having no problem at all beating his man off the line, getting into the backfield. Yeah, they're doing a good job of moving uh, up front and, and sending a couple of linebackers at the perfect timing. They're just looking for gaps to hit. German to punt it away again for the third time in the first quarter. We are still scoreless here from BBVA Compass Stadium. Josh Parrison will attempt to return this one. Now he'll just let it bounce, and it will be downed at the Tiger 36-yard line. 45-yard punt, the best 
effort thus far for Nate German in this young 2012 season. This Early impressions, a lot of jitters. Yeah. Just, uh, teams look to be out of sync in this week zero matchup. And really the, the most impressive thing I think that I've seen so far has been this Klein Collins defense, especially the penetration that they're getting in, the tackling, the, the disruption amongst the receivers getting downfield. They've been doing a great job. The Tigers will begin on their own 36-yard line. Thomas split out to the bottom of your screen. Out of the shotgun, and Parison comes in motion, and a flag is down. False start will be called on the Tigers. Last night here on the first half, of the BBVA Compass Kickoff Classic, Cinco Ranch defeated Cy Ranch 34 to six. This is the second half and we'll be chatting with Matt Malatesta of Vibe the Magazine, managing editor at halftime. Vibe helping put this event together along with BBVA Compass Stadium. So after the penalty, it is first and 15 for the Tigers. Bubble screen, caught, Thomas, middle of the field, across the 40 and out to the 42-yard line, tackled by Eamon Alleyan. Eamon Land did a great job on that play of not getting beat down the field and, and keeping his position, because he, great job of just wrapping up. Gain of 11, second down and four. Thomas, two receptions last year, played as a cornerback defensively for the Tigers in 2011. Harrison comes in motion. Screen pass to him, looking for lead blocks. And Harrison over midfield gets a first down for the Tigers. Hit on the play by Andrew Pruitt at the Wildcat 48 yard line. Jordan Thomas threw a great block on that screen play. I love seeing receivers get downfield and do their job. You know, typically receivers, they want the ball so much and everything like that, but you have to learn how to block if you want to be a good receiver. Well, last season, Klein Collins just made their, made their day with the uh, screen passes, and it looks like they're going to try to use their athletes to do that again this season. Harrison comes in motion after a pickup of 12. Handoff, Goodson. Goodson to the left side, and in the open field, he breaks a tackle and reverses his field, looking for blocks, and he may have them. There's a flag down. Goodson down the right sideline. Inside the 20 and taken down at the 14. We'll check the marker. It's a 33 yard run right now, but we'll check the penalty flag. They're gonna call a penalty on number six, I believe, but it looks like a good block. That's no, not that's a, block. a clean block. That's a clean block. That they, they're gonna call a block in the back on that, but he got him. That, actually, that one. <laughs> that last block look. Little suspect. <laughs> <laughs> While they sort out the penalty, let's have a look at the Cywoods defense. Their defensive lineup presented by McDonald's. And they've got a couple of D1 commits. Notice the linebacker, DeAndre Davis. So far, he hasn't made an impression early on in Alfred Pullum. He's going to be a Big 12 player at Baylor. They are the heart and soul of this Cywoods defense. 10-yard penalty for the illegal block in the back, which negates a, just a heck of a run from Marcus Goodson. Two penalties, 15 yards thus far for Klein Collins. We approach 2-10 remaining here in the first quarter. Shotgun for the Tigers. Jackson on a play fake. Lofts one deep up top, and it's Thomas who makes the go. Oh, he oh. drops it at the 15. Looked like he had double coverage beat. Alfred Pullum was back there along with Brooks Resandich. Looks like Resandich got a hand in there late and pulled that away. Because it looks like Jordan Thomas was going to make that catch. He had both hands on the ball. That's just such a hard play to make. Come down to the ground with it. Yeah. And, and that's one of those plays as a receiver, you have to go to the highest point of the ball, and he still kind of let the ball come into him. Looked like it could have been a, a jumping match there for a jump ball, and, and he kind of missed that opportunity. Although it did not work, you got to be happy with the accuracy from Blake Jackson. And that was a solid throw. And the patience back there. This offensive line has done a great job. Second down and 20. 
Tigers on their own half of the field on their own 43. Screen pass mm -hmm. out of the reach of Jarius Bishop. Jackson was feeling the pressure coming on by Derek Johnson, a senior backup defensive tackle playing behind Jordan Jones tonight. Pass incomplete, stopping the clock with 1.51 to go here in the first quarter. You know, when you drop back for those screen passes like that, you have to have really a good touch on the ball, you know, as you have your backs coming and screaming across the field like that. That one's just a little bit hot. He's had Jarius Bishop open on that screen pass a couple times, just can't seem to hit him. Third down and long. Pump fake. And Jackson throws left. It is caught by Goodson. Then it's jarred loose. They're going to whistle that a completion and a fumble. Cy Woods have recovered. I don't think he made a move up the field. Yeah. That should be an incomplete pass. We'll get another good look here. Great play fake by Jackson. That's a great tackle. I call that incomplete. No, that's an incomplete pass. It'll be a 13-yard pass play, then the fumble. And the game's first turnover. And Svoboda is saying that's an incomplete pass. He wants an explanation. Not going to get the official over there. You can see him on this side of the field at the They're 50. Trying to, trying to Exactly, ball, trying to explain yeah. his case. It's just a missed call. I don't see how they even... It's nowhere near a fumble. First and 10, Cy Woods take over on their own 48. German, under pressure, scrambles to his right and is tackled. Another sack by this Klein Collins defense. They're, they are just so busy on that defensive side of the ball that the offensive line has no idea what's going on. Look how quick he got around the corner. And they're just, they're just being outmanned. Casey Massey on the sack and a loss of one on the play. Second down and 11 for the Wildcats. They deploy three receivers. You see them on the bottom of your screen. Screen pass, it is caught. Stewart has some running room. There's a flag down, yeah. and Stewart gets a first down across the 40 and down to the Tiger 37-yard line. But again, we will have to check the marker. It's going to be a hold out there. He had really no reason to continue holding him. Yeah, he did. Did you see the hit no, Frankie Griffin look, put on him that's, before? That's, no, <laughs> that's it. He didn't have to hold him. He didn't have to hold him. He, he had him st stood up enough. Let the running back make that decision on where to cut. Four-yard pass play to the Tiger 49, then 10 yards for the holding call. Three penalties for 20 yards so far for Cy Woods in this first quarter. So we are inside the final minute of play. Two catches for Stewart, negative three yards. Looking at about a second down and 18 from the 41-yard line. Quick pass, caught on the right-hand side. Oh, good. And Stewart is tackled in mm. the backfield. A great open field tackle by Derek Thomas. Boss back to the 38-yard line. Well, it just seems like Derek Thomas seems to be at the right place at the right time on every play defensively. Loss of three. And, and on third down and long. Fifth third down attempt. German airs it out. And he overshoots mm. Jake Seabach. That'll stop the clock with nine seconds to go. Another punt. We'll be coming off the right foot of Nate German here in the first quarter. Cy Woods is just really, they just, they're going to have to have something that's bread and butter. Right now they don't have anything that's bread and butter. They... The sweep worked a couple of times. They haven't really done that in a while because of the fact that it, they have these penalties continue to come against them. And that defensive line of Klein Collins has just been amazing. You know, the front seven for Klein Collins just has not been fooled by Cy Woods. Ball on the 36-yard line for a punt from Nate German to Josh Parison. Good kick. And it touched the ball. by the Get Tigers. And great job by the return man. That was Parison. Great poise. He saw that it hit one of his teammates trying to block downfield. That hit number 10 right in the back. Isaiah Santos. So you have to yell, you know, Peter, Peter, get away from the ball. 
great awareness to see that it hit his teammate and get up there and get on the ball because that would have been excellent field position for Cy Woods. That is the end of the first quarter with the score. The Cy Woods Wildcats nothing, the Klein Collins Tigers nothing. We'll return to BBVA Compass Stadium in just a moment. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing jobs, or you're an employer needing to hire personnel, then you need to talk with Matter Staffing Services. Matter Staffing has been in business for over four decades and is one of the largest staffing services in the Houston area, servicing a national market. Matter Staffing has specialists wanting to serve you in the areas of engineering, accounting, administrative support, industrial, IT, marketing, and many other job categories. They have seven locations to serve your staffing needs. Call 713-941-0616 and they can direct you to the office nearest you. Matter Staffing on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Start of the second quarter in a run by Blake Jackson, net six yards for Klein Collins. They will have second down and four from their own 37-yard line. We welcome you back to kickoff week presented by First Community Credit Union. No score between Cy Woods and Klein Collins. Early jitters in the first quarter. We see a lot of punts. We've seen some penalties. And we hope for a better second 12 minutes here in the second quarter. The Tigers will scrimmage from their own 37-yard line. Four-man front for Cy Woods, and a timeout's been taken. Klein Collins calls timeout. From the sideline, we'll step aside. 11-13 to play in the second quarter. Early on in the second, no score. Bigger. No, 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 bigger still. Ah. It's good to be king. This fall, experience king-size dining, shopping, merriment, and more at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Discount tickets are on sale now at Randall's, Walgreens, Wood Forest National Bank, and online at texrenfest.com. The Texas Renaissance Festival. Choose your own adventure. With Brent Moody and Jarrell Branch, Michael Silvers with you. 11-13 to play in the second quarter. Second down and four for the Tigers. They'll scrimmage from their own 37-yard line. After the timeout, we'll see what they cook up here. Offensive coordinator for Klein Collins is Adrian Mitchell. He is new to the program. Drew Svoboda, the head coach, was calling the plays last season. And on a pitch to Parison, he gets first down and more in the Wildcat territory and worked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 35-yard run for Josh Parison. Such a good block. Marcus Goodson hurt his shoulder. He got out there in front of his running back and was able to lay a good, clean block right here and pick up about 20 more yards for the running back. And Josh Pearson, he just did a great job of being patient and waiting for that block to develop. Just the third first down of the game for Klein Collins. First and 10 for the Tigers on the Wildcat 31. Brooks for Sandich. Ran Parison out of bounds, or he could have been off to the races. Under center for the first time, Blake Jackson. They run out of a flex bone, and he'll back, drop back to pass over the middle, and it is Thomas oh. off his fingertips. Almost picked off by the commitment to Baylor, Alfred Pullum, the future Baylor Bear. Yeah, it looked like Pullum actually ended up getting a hand on it. It's a great pass, just placed it perfectly, but... Nope, Pullum didn't get a hand on it. It looks like he just lost it maybe in the lights or something, or maybe somebody's hand kind of blocked it and he lost the ball, you know. It's Not a bad to, idea, though, to oh, it's beautiful hit the home pass. run hitter. Yeah, hit him dead in the helmet. Definitely won't want that back. Second down and 10. Goodson in motion. Handoff to the fullback, and it is Bishop tied up. 
It inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Gain of two, brings it third down and long. Bishop just seems a little sluggish anytime he's had his hands on the ball. It doesn't really seem to have much explosive, explosion. Doesn't really seem decisive on where he wants to run. Because he's not a runner. And so <laughs> far, we've heard Alfred Pullum. We've called his name quite a few times. But so far, not much from the physical tackler, DeAndre Davis, who's committed to play ball at the University of Texas in 2013. Come on, DeAndre. Jackson on third down, fires left, caught. It is Thomas inside the 10, Thomas inside the 5. Thrown down by Pullum for first down and goal. Down at the three yard line, a 26 yard play. And that's how you get, you know, you make up from getting hit in the head with the ball. That's the first third down conversion for Klein Collins. Their fourth first down, second of this drive, and looking to come away with some points. Jordan Thomas did a good job of using his strength and just continue to keep churning down the field. He's not really that big of a guy. Out of the shotgun, Jackson. Play fakes, keeps it himself, dives to the end zone, touchdown! There's still so much confusion in the backfield. These backs don't really know where to go. They're not follow throughing. You know, they're not following all the way through the play. An outstanding job there by Blake Jackson. He found a little gap and was able to hit it. The full head of steam and get into the end zone, come away with some points on that drive for his team. Rhett Peterson, who missed a field goal from 35 yards out earlier in the first quarter, on the tack on the PAT. Late personnel coming onto the field in the form of Brandon Edmonds. Tanner will hold for Peterson. And the kick is good. 10-10 remaining in the second quarter. 7-0 Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods. grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There. He just got 10 cents uh, back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. Life is a road you travel with many destinations, like college for the kids, a new house, and retirement. I am Earl Thompson, your neighborhood State Farm agent, and I can do more than ever to guide you with a State Farm insurance and financial review. You'll get a clear picture of where you stand now and a way to help you plan for where you want to be. Visit me on the web, earlthompson.biz, to schedule your free insurance and financial review. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Early on here in the second quarter, we have our first score of tonight's game. And for more, here's Brent Moody in this drive summary. Three-yard touchdown run by Blake Jack Jackson. Caps off a drive of six plays, 69 yards, one minute and 50 seconds off the clock. The extra point attempt by Peterson was good. It's 7-0. Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods. Big play on that was that pass to Jordan Thomas. Worked inside the five and then Jackson on the, the capper from three yards out and Peterson will kick it off for the Tigers. Coming out of it from the end zone. Middle of the field, Ragusa. We'll see where Ford uh, progress is stopped. It'll be stopped short of the 20-yard line. When you're the home team, you have a natural advantage. You know the turf, the players. You know how to play the field and work it to your advantage. It's the same in banking. With Community Bank of Texas, you get all the home team advantages of an independent bank who works for you. At Community, we have the flexibility to work with you in ways those mega banks can't or won't. So give yourself the home team advantage at Community Bank of Texas and bank where you live. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Wildcats will begin from their own 19-yard line. Oh, and they've got to protect Nate German on this drive. They've got to give him some time. Three receivers deployed at the top of your screen. And on a screen pass, it is Sam Stewart. Stewart across the 25, out to the 26-yard line. Christian Snow, district newcomer of the year last season, junior, 
on the tackle. Sam Stewart looked like he was being hesitant because he wanted his blocks to develop, but as soon as a, a hole opens, he's going to have to hit it because Klein Collins does a great job of converging on the play. German 6 of 11 here in the first half for 27 yards. And on a little end around, the toss to Roberts. Roberts with some open field up the sideline, spinning over the 40 and whistled out of bounds at the 35-yard line. But it'll be good enough for another Wildcat first down. Brett Bryan kind of over pursued his, his block there and didn't have anyone to hit out there. You don't ever want to be an offensive lineman and get out there and have no one to hit. Nine yard run for a first down by Roberts. Hand off to Stewart on first down. Attacking the right side, pulled down from behind by Snow, short of the 40. Snow did a great job of getting lateral on that play. Yeah, all the Tigers defensively, they just seem to flock to the ball very well. They don't over pursue, you have no cutback lanes, but their, their lateral movement is outstanding. Coming up near the conclusion of tonight's game, we will select the champion Chevrolet players of the game. Champion Chevrolet, who are you going to call? Call champion. Second down and a long six for the Wildcats. Ball on their own 39. German on a tough snap. He throws on a slant pass. It is complete to Roberts. Middle of the field to the 20 and taken down at the 15-yard line. <laughs> Saving the touchdown, Jeremy Winchester. Jeremy Winchester has some wheels. But we have a flag down back at the 40-yard line. Great catch. Will it be coming back, though? Snag that ball out the sky. But Jeremy Winchester, I mean, that looked like Usain Bolt. Yes. Oh. An wow. eligible receiver downfield will negate. This huge play for Cy Woods. You know, that's one you still have to keep on your highlight film. That, uh, it was nice the way he snagged that out of the sky like that. That man. was a 46, check it, a 56-yard play negated. Y your highlight really, you the penalty. yourself. Right. You, you, yeah. you so that's that. You keep omit. that one. Yeah, you keep that one and just. Four penalties here in this first half committed by Cy Woods. It, what would have been about a first, well, very Close to, uh, will be in the red zone and just on the doorstep of the end zone. Will That's now it. be second down and 11 and from their own 34. I'm sure Winchester is going to show all of his buddies him sucking him up. I mean, down sucked <laughs> him up. But this is something that Cy Woods needed, you know, to boost their confidence, to get them going, get a little bit of momentum. They've been going backwards, it seems like, ever since their second possession of the game. Roberts will get credited with a 10-yard reception and then, or excuse me, a 5-yard reception and then the... Penalty drops him back. Second down and 11 from the 34-yard line, coming down to 8.15 remaining in the second quarter. 7-0 Klein Collins and more flags. Delay a game this time. It is week zero. Your favorite week. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's everyone's favorite week. You work out the kinks, you come back, and you're a totally different team. That's right. Hopefully in week one. Hopefully you're a totally different team in, in a positive you know, light. It's just a lot of things going on up front right now for this team. Same system, new coach. Second down and 16. German throws on a slant pass, and he's got man. his man into Tiger territory. Zach Duncan, his first catch of this 2012 season, and it's a first down for the Wildcats. Great job of just throwing a beautiful pass. Great job of looking the ball into his hands, but of course, Jeremy Winchester's not about to let anybody score. Well, Nate German just hit his wide receiver right in stride. Excellent job getting the yards after the catch. 31 yards on the pitch and catch to Duncan. Oh, he was there. And a first down and under pressure. German is dropped back outside the Tiger 45 yard line. Was that Thomas again? Thomas was in on the play. Thomas was in on the play and I believe that's Parsons that was with him. I'm not sure why Nate German decided not to let that ball fly. Timeout on the field. Let's step aside. 7.38 to play in the second quarter. 7-0 Klein Collins.
footage was captured at a local grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There, he just got 10 cents back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. Seven thirty-eight to play in the second quarter of a 7-0 Tiger lead. Second down and 15, though, facing Cy Woods from the Tiger 45-yard line. If I were Cy Woods, I would just run that same exact play just on the other side. Have him go up, come across the field, run a little post. German getting his opportunity to be the number one quarterback for the Cy Woods offense under first-year head coach Trent Faith last season. He threw for 715 yards, had a touchdown to interception ratio of 7-4, to four, filling the shoes of a departed Gabe West. West threw for over 1,600 yards in 2011 in a season that saw Cy Woods reach the area round but were dispatched by the Katy Tigers who went on to the Region 3 semifinals and suffered an upset loss at the hands of the LaPorte Bulldogs. Just had some issues with the clock. Now we got it right at 7.43. Bulldogs were victorious in overtime fashion last night over Clearbrook at home. And on German, he throws and Mason Roberts didn't even put his hands up to try to throw that or try to catch that pass. Not sure if it was out of his reach or not, but nonetheless, it is third down for the Wildcats. I think he knew he was running with Frankie Griffin and just didn't want to get hit. This brings up the fifth third down of this first half for Cy Woods. They've converted only on their first third down of the game. What's funny is that's the same play that worked earlier. To the I apologize, field. sixth third down. They need to get to the Tiger 30. German will throw. Slings it up top and a jump ball. We have some contact and the pass falls incomplete. The coverage by Kevin Farmer on the pass intended for Chase Ragusa. It's almost like he's throwing to a spot to see if he might get the the interference call because he wasn't open. He just kind of took a chunk down the field to see if it was going to be there. It looks like uh, Kevin Farmer shaking up a bit after the coverage may just be cramping. Looked like he came down on his ankle kind of bad, actually. So it is fourth down and 15. And Nate German will stand on his own 40 yard line to deliver another punt. Timeout taken by Klein Collins. That is their second of the first half. And they lead 7-0. You're watching Saturday Night Football, presented by Texas Emergency Care Center here on Fox Sports Southwest. Double-digit pay raises are history. Now money's a lot harder to get a hold of and even harder to hang on to. That's why I, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson, would like to offer you a free discount double check. I will go through your car insurance policy to make sure you are getting the discounts you deserve and aren't leaving any money on the table. So call me, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson in Houston, because being there to help keep more of your money in your pocket is why I'm here. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You a fanatic? Open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit union of the Houston Texans. As we bring you back here to BBVA Compass Stadium, punt executed by Nate German. Not the best of punts. It is out of bounds at the 26-yard line. 29-yard punt for German. Coming up, it's the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. We'll get you caught up on what has happened here in the first half. Scores from earlier on Thursday and last night. Plus, we'll chat with Matt Malatesta of Vipe the Magazine. Plus, some other special guests maybe coming our way. It's all coming your way next on the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. Now, do you think that's a little trickeration to have German back there punting 
just so maybe they can do a fake, you know, whatever later? Or do you think he's the only one that can put on the team? I think it's the first one. I think a lot of schools go. They have quarterbacks that do that kind of rugby-style punt. First down and Jackson with room to run, and then he is driven back at the 35-yard line, a yard short of the first down. And Alfred Pullum led the way defensively for the Wildcats. Good job of recognizing the whole boom. Golly. Channeling my inner John Madden. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, he hit a wall. That's one thing you don't want you to see your quarterback do is get hurt on week zero. Jackson has called his number four times in this first half, and he has rushed for 22 yards and a touchdown. Second down and a yard for the Tigers. And on the reverse, this worked for Cy Woods. This is Parison. Parison across the 40 and out to the 42-yard line. Pick up a seven and a Tiger first down. Scouted well by Cy Woods, it's still able to pick up some yards in the first down. 6.20 and counting here in the second quarter. 7-0 Klein Collins, first and 10. They'll scrimmage from their own 43. Parison comes in motion. Hand off to Bishop, right up the middle across the 45. He gets it out to the 48-yard line. Gain of five by Bishop. Just really seems like Bishop tries to be a finesse runner when he's built like he should just be running people over. Played the fullback's position when we saw Klein Collins in the flex bone earlier on in this first half. Second down and a long five. Hand off to Bishop. Tries to break it to the right side, check it the left side. He goes nowhere, leading the way. Xavier Banks got some help from Eamon Alain and a host of other Wildcats, a loss of two on the play. Hey, hey Michael, something about Jay Bishop. Real Transfer in from the state of California. Him and the starting corner, Kevin Farmer, our stepbrother. That's a nice move in, isn't it? Yeah. I'd say so. Five minutes to go here in the second. And it is third down and about eight yards to go for Klein Collins. On the oh. keeper, it is Jackson. Elects not to pitch it, keeps it himself, and is stuck by DeAndre Davis. We finally get a chance to talk about this young man. A senior at six foot three, 210 pounds, committed to Texas back in February. The word on him, a physical tackler, we saw it there, but he can drop and cover as well. Very big asset in zone and man coverage. And a sure-handed tackle preventing Jackson from getting first down yardage. And the Tigers will punt it away. And see, with Blake Jackson on that play, it's more of a read, but you could tell as soon as he took the ball uh, that he had made his mind up that he was going to run. Shreve with the punt, end over end kick. Kicks it away from Chase Ragusa, but he takes a pretty big hit from Davis, and a flag is down back in Tiger territory. Well, Davis is going to claim Isaiah Santos ran him into the kicker. They waved it off. They're going to say Isaiah Santos did run him into the kicker. Thirty-one yard punt. Second of the night for Shreve. Four ten remaining in the second quarter. Cy Woods come back out on offense, trailing seven nothing. This was a team last year that threw for 2,371 yards, a total offense amount of 5,380 total offensive yards in 12 games played in 2011. Trent Faith knew him well last season. He joked about how big Cy Woods was able to uh, defeat his former club, defensive coordinator at Cy Creek. German throws low, but a good catch is made by Zach Duncan, and Duncan will be stopped at the 28-yard line after a reception of eight yards. It really looks like Nate German is throwing off his back foot a lot. He's not really stepping into these passes that he's throwing down the field. On second down and two, Roberts in motion. Give to him. Breaks the tackle in the backfield and speeds up the left sideline. 
And is out of bounds at the 38-yard line after a scamper of 10 and a first down for the Wildcats. Good job of just shaking that tackle. Forced out of bounds by Isaiah Santos. And his first down for the Wildcats from their own 38. Play action. German in trouble, and Thomas got him again back at the 30-yard line. A loss of nine. German always has his eyes downfield to try to read his progressions, and he never actually feels the pressure. As he's looking, he's going through his progressions, and he just sees them late. That is the sixth sack by this Tiger defense, and a lot of them credited to Derek Thomas. That's a good namesake, wouldn't you say? Great namesake. Second down and long for the Wildcats. They'll scrimmage from their own 30. German fires a deep pass. Contact, and a flag is down. Pass was intended for Nick Hooper. Cover supplied by junior backup cornerback Eric Lacey. That's some pretty good coverage. It looked yeah, like Hooper just coverage. fell. I'm going to watch it here on the replay, but it looked like Hooper just got tripped up on his own feet and fell. German always has like this little hesitation. It's not necessarily a pump fake, but it's like he's trying to grasp the ball or get a better grip on the ball. He's done it several times tonight. And it looks like it throws him off just a little bit. Yeah, guys, I don't know if y'all can see the replay, or not, but it looked like he did get tangled up with Eric Lacey. Uh, purely accidental, of course, though. And they oh, waved the marker wow. off as Jay mentioned, accidental contact. And he got a great look being on the sideline. And that's exactly what the officials eventually came to that conclusion as well. I think that's kind of a makeup for the fumble, yeah, the fumble. incomplete pass to Marcus <laughs> Goodson earlier. Trent Faith giving uh, our referee Scott Johnson an earful. Well, that's going to bring up the seventh third down for Cy Woods. They've only converted on the one. Looking at a third down and 20. Cy Woods need to get to their own 48 to get a new set of downs. Third and 20 for the Wildcats. Obiaman, and we've got another flag, and Cy Woods will be called for starting early. Trevor Rogus. Sixth penalty on Trent Faith's club here in the first half. It's the third time they've been called for false start. Duncan split out to the top of your screen. Third down and 24 for the Wildcats on their own 26-yard line. German over the middle, and he throws it too low for Duncan. And once again, the Wildcats will be forced to punt it away. It is a 7-0 Klein Collins lead. 2.57 remaining here in quarter number two. And Cy Woods just can't seem to get in any sort of, the, uh, any sort of a rhythm, whether it's because of their own miscues on the offensive end or because, and likely a good cause, is that defense of the Klein Collins Tigers. Yeah, Jeremy Winchester did a good job, too, on that play, just keeping that receiver in front of him because he's been getting beat on that side. German punts it away again, and this is a beautiful punt. Parrison does not call fair catch, and he eats it at the 32-yard line. Good downfield coverage on special teams by Alfred Pullum. Forty-one yard punt. You got to kind of have a feel for the game and realize how long that ball hung up, air, and right. somebody's about to light you up if you don't call for the fair and catch. He, it looked like he put his head, his eyes down, and saw the guys coming, but maybe it was just too much, too quick. Plenty of time on the clock for Klein Collins, who have a seven nothing lead. Two forty-nine remaining in quarter number two until we break for halftime. Jackson out of the shotgun, has Bishop in the backfield alongside. Parrison comes in motion on first and 10. Jackson fires into the flats, right side caught by the fullback, Brandon Edmonds, who gets a first down across the 45. Looks like they're gonna mark him out of bounds at the 44 yard line for an 11 yard pass play. A 
I really like what I'm seeing from Blake Jackson, the way he's getting the ball out of his hand, the way he's delivering it to his receivers. He's very patient, very aggressive all at the same time. Looks like the officials are taking a timeout because there's a hurt player, but he's on the sideline. I don't, not to sound insensitive, but <laughs> could y'all keep <laughs> Too <playing>? late. <laughs> Coming up on the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show, we'll get you caught up on what has happened here in the first half. Look at scores and finals from earlier here in Week Zero, plus a chat with Matt Malatesta of Vipe the Magazine, maybe another special guest or two. And it's all coming your way next on the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. Well, district scores for the teams in District 13-5A this weekend. Atascacita beat Doby 31-6. Spring lost to Manville 35-21. Klein Oak in the epic OT winner over Langham Creek, 63 to 56. Lamar defeated Klein Forest by 30, 33 to three. Katie had a 41 nothing lead at halftime over Klein at Reliance Stadium last night. They went on to defeat the Bearcats, 48 to seven. Westfield no problems with Aldean, 43 seven winners, and Elsick beat Kingwood, 20 to six. Screen pass left side, Parison looking for lead blocks, won't get any. Pulled down by DeAndre Davis at the Wildcat 49-yard line for about a three-yard play. Two catches, 15 yards for Parison. Second down and six. Give him six yards on that play. And here is a pitch to Trey White. First down yardage and more. It ran out of bounds at the 36-yard line for an 11-yard play and another Tiger first down. First time for Trey White to touch the ball. And he gets the first down, down to the Wildcat 33. This, this Trey White also played defense for Klein Collins last season, had a couple of interceptions. This side Woods defense is really, they all have their hands on the hips. They look very, very tired. Clock stop with 2.05 remaining here until halftime. Thomas will split out to the top of your screen. Out of the shotgun, Jackson. Pump fakes. Will throw to the end zone, and he's looking for Thomas. Just off his right hand and out of bounds and incomplete. Covered by Andrew Pruitt and Brooks Rosandich. Not, again, not a bad idea for Jackson to... Go for it all. It's a great pump fake, but it didn't fool anybody. But it looked good. But it's hard to throw. I mean, you threw it in double coverage. It's just one of those things that, you know, you might have to look off. And so you've got some downs. You've got some time to work with. Why not go for it all and see if you can't catch the defense napping? As you said, they, the <coughs> coaching staff sees that they're all with their hands on their knees also. Jackson 7 of 14 for 89 yards and a rushing touchdown, this time a handoff. <laughs> New back in the ball game is Jeremy Fair. He goes absolutely nowhere, runs right into the teeth of the Side Woods defense, and is stuck at the line of scrimmage for third down. Nobody wants to block for the big guys. Have you noticed that? The fullbacks, they just do your own thing, get your own yardage. A little bitterness in that uh, commentary, huh? Just Got saying. a former running back in the booth. <laughs> just saying. Played both positions in high school. Seven nothing, Klein Collins. They're looking to add to that. Faced with third down and ten, they'll scrimmage from the Wildcat 33. Play fake, Jackson throws, caught. Parison oh. makes one man miss and is close to first down yardage. Another couple of juke moves, and he's pulled down by Xavier Banks. It'll depend on the spot. It'll be a gain of ten, but we'll check to see if he got the first down. A couple of shifty little moves after he uh, made the catch. <laughs> the first guy just lost it. I mean, he got, yeah, two. <laughs> it is enough for a first down for the Tigers. It's 2 of 5 on third down, eight first down of the first half. Timeout. Timeout taken by Cy Woods this time with 67 seconds to go in the second quarter. 7 nothing, Klein Collins. Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center will continue in just a moment.
If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Cy Woods spending their second time out. 107 remaining in the second quarter. It's going to be a first down and 10 for the Tigers, Drew. What do you like to see from them uh, on this first down and 10 play? I say go ahead and try to get something deep down the field. They need to get something going. They need to be able to go into halftime with some type of positivity because their first drive looked pretty good, but ever since then, they've just been going backwards. First and 10 for the Tigers on the Wildcat 23. Harrison in motion to the bottom of your screen. Pass Jackson out of the reach of Brandon Edmonds. He was able to get his left hand on it, but couldn't bring it in. Pass falls incomplete, second down for the Tigers. And this between plays, Cy Woods just seems completely spent. I mean, you've yeah, got to, the coaching staff has got to see that and just ram it down their throats the last minute of this, of this half. I'm really surprised that uh, Klein Collins hasn't run a sweep or something like that, you know, uh, to this wide side of the field. Well, I mean, they've lived off getting the ball into their athletes' hands out on the edge, and you haven't seen much of that. Slot receiver Mikey Tanner, right side of the offensive formation, joining Josh Parrison on second down and 10. Jackson will pass. Throws it underneath. We'll see if Jordan Thomas was able to hold on. No, he wasn't. Another incomplete pass, and it will be third down. Is Marcus Goodson hurt? He hasn't been in a game for a little bit of time, so he could be. Remember on that block? Remember he had that good block? Looked like he hurt his shoulder or something like that? Yeah, sure did. They've been uh, platooning guys out there into the backfield, but haven't seen him since that block. And I can't find him on the sideline. Third down and 10 on the Wildcat 23. Shotgun for Jackson with three receivers in the lineup, and Parrison comes down in motion. Jackson in trouble on a blitz, and Davis brings him down back at the 30-yard line. A loss of six on the play. And as DeAndre Davis is bringing him to the ground, Blake Jackson almost makes a terrible decision. He looks like he's about to throw the ball and try to get rid of it. Decides to bring it back in, <laughs> thinks better of it, but he was pump faking the ball like he was about to try to get rid of it. About to Brett Favre that thing. At least 46 seconds left on the clock here in the second quarter and a decision to be made by Drew Svoboda, the coaching staff of the Klein Collins Tigers, on whether or not they want to keep the offense out there on fourth down or they want to try to bring out Rhett Peterson and uh, have about an opportunity a for yard field goal. Yeah, I'd go ahead and, and go for it on fourth down. And I mean, you really have no, no reason not to, you know. 46 seconds left. You have a defense that's spent. You know, they got the kicker out there. Run a sweep, run a reverse. They're going to let him try a 47-yard field goal, I think. Champion Chevrolet halftime show coming up next. Scores from around the greater Houston area. Take a look back here at the first half. and Matt Malatesta of Vite Magazine scheduled to join us. It's all coming your way next on the Champion Chevrolet halftime show. 7-0 Klein Collins and Rhett Peterson will attempt a 47-yard field goal. Out of the hold of Mikey Tanner. High snap. Peterson got under it. Doesn't look like it's going to have the distance, and it comes up short. Short and wide left. Score will remain. Tigers 7, Wildcats nothing as they turn it over. And 43 seconds to work with. Let's see what kind of a two-minute offense or a 43-second offense Will be, in, uh, will be employed here by the Wildcats. Yeah, my assessment earlier was actually about Cy Woods, that they need to get something going, get something down the field, go into halftime with something positive because they've been going backwards. I'd be surprised to see them. The Nate German's been running for his life the entire first half. I'd be surprised to see anything other than a knee here. Good crowd on hand from BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston. Glad to have you with us here on Fox Sports Southwest. Michael Silvers, Brent Moody, Jarrell Branch, and our crew. On first down, German throws inaccurately as he looks to lead Nick Hooper, but Hooper couldn't grab it, and it's quickly second down. These are the same plays that, they, that were effective for them earlier, but they're not running them quite the same now. They're, they're, the passes are kind of lazy. The receivers aren't really running their pattern. It just, they're just kind of off right now. 
German on second down, he hands it off. And, and uh, E.B. Obion, or Obiamon will get a first down to the 43-yard line on a 13-yard rumble. Fourth first down for Cy Woods here tonight. First and 10 as they will continue. Try to march down the field in short order. On a slant, it is caught. Duncan into Tiger territory and taken down at the 37-yard line. And that's the plays that they keep trying to, to, to make happen and, and have that connection there. But his passes are really, he's really kind of lofting it. They don't have a lot of uh, oomph on them. 20-yard pass play. Duncan has got the most receiving yards and a handoff. Mason Roberts will be stuck for a one-yard gain. As we come down to 12 seconds and counting, 10 seconds. Cassie Macy was there on the tackle. And German spikes it. One more play left in the first half. Here from BBVA Compass Stadium. 7-0 Klein Collins. One more play. Timeout taken by Klein Collins. That is their final timeout in the first half. So the question becomes, what does Cy Woods do here? Do they try something over the middle and try to do some trickeration, or do they just go for it all with one pass to the end zone. I say go for it all, go to the end zone. Yeah, but uh, go for it over the middle. It seems like Klein Collins has had a difficult time defending the pass deep in the middle of the field. They've been all right on the sidelines, but up the middle of the field, Cy Woods has found some open receivers. They just haven't been able to hit them. Also, in the last couple of plays, Jeremy Winchester's been dropping back more in a prevent defense instead of trying to play his man, He's instead of trying to play that zone. 17-5A scores, not much activity in this week zero. Made Creek destroyed Cy Springs 41-0. That was on Thursday night. Then Cy Falls got a win back for 17-5A with a shutout win over Oak Ridge last night, 42-0. We mentioned the epic 63-56 overtime thriller, Langham Creek on the losing end to Klein Oak. And last night here in this building, Cinco Ranch defeated Cy Ranch 34-6. One final play here in the first half, Nate German, out of the shotgun, ball is on the Tiger 37-yard line. German steps up, throws it to the end zone. And it is batted down, a good play. Could have gone for an interception, but Kevin Farmer content to just knock it down. And that will bring us to the conclusion of the first half. It's a 7-0 Klein Collins lead as we go down to the field here and chat with Jay Darnell. He's got Coach Drew Svoboda. Yep, right here with Coach Svoboda. Coach, you, you have a 7-0 lead, but easily you could be up by two, three scores here. Could we? I don't know. Got it. I feel like they're a player from scoring every time they get the ball. Um, yeah, we've had so many opportunities. You know, what? You know, we just got to egg them better. Um, you know, it, it, they're good. We just have to we have to capitalize. They've had some opportunities too that they that they hadn't executed on too. But uh, we'll be fine. We just second half's gonna be huge. Talk about your defense and what they've done so far to shut outside Woods. Defense is playing really well. They're they're uh, you know so far they've done really really good. We just got to keep it up. They're gonna make some good adjustments, and uh, you know we got to keep up with them. Thanks for the time, coach. Thank you, Jay. All right, thank you, Jay. And that brings us to the end of the first half. The Klein Collins Tigers take a 7-0 lead to the locker room over the Side Woods Wildcats. We'll return with the champion Chevrolet halftime show in just a moment. This is Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. Come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Following, Following footage, footage was, captured was captured at a local grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There, he just got 10 cents back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. 
bank where you about an ale about an ale bigger no 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 bigger still ah it's good to be king this fall experience king size dining shopping merriment and more at the texas renaissance festival discount tickets are on sale now at randall's walgreens wood forest national bank and online at texrenfest.com the texas renaissance festival choose your own adventure Fanatic, open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit Welcome back here to the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show from BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston. Michael Silver is joined by Matt Malatesta, Managing Editor of Vipe Magazine here in Houston. Matt, pretty good turnout and a good event for this first time here at BBVA Compass Stadium. How do you like the turnout? Yeah, we're really pleased with it. We're happy. You know, BBVA is a first-class organization. Their stadium is out of this world. So we've had a great time doing it. Um, and this is our first year doing it, and we had a double pet header. So next time we all kind of know what to do better, but, but tremendous facility, and we've had a blast doing it. You know the sport. You're an analyst on Channel 57 locally here in Houston. You go back to last night's game, 34-6 win for Cinco Ranch. They looked awfully good against Cy Ranch. They look really good. I tell you what, there's so many turnovers. You know, there was 10 turnovers in the game. Um, both big-time running backs got knocked out of the game. So um, it, it, it was definitely interesting. Cy Ranch is going to be very good. Or Cy Ranch could be good. Cinco Ranch could be really, really good. However, they play Katy, and they also have North Shore on the schedule as well. That one should be a fantastic, and both of them, obviously. When it comes down to District 19-5A, as of recent history, it really goes down to Cinco Ranch and Katy in that final weekend. It, it absolutely does, but i tell you what, I like what Memorial's doing. Um, watch out for Seven Lakes. They kind of stubbed their toe la uh, last night, but Memorial... Um, Katie, Cinco, that's kind of the cream of the crop for that district. And when, uh, when you mention Memorial, you only go back a couple of years when they made it all the way to the state semifinals. An unprecedented run, an unlikely run, and they were eliminated before going to the state championship game. So that was a, that had to be a, a great thing for Memorial back then. They had a little uh, hiccup last year, made uh, playoffs a little early of her exit, didn't get quite as far. But uh, like you said, Memorial, Gary Koch is a great head coach. Absolutely. They're very good. And, you know, they had a very good duo a couple of years ago. Um, Boomer White, the running back, it was, it had a tremendous career in baseball and football. But hey, I tell you what, they're just going to reload. What Koch does over there, it's not pretty. It's pretty plain vanilla, but they win a lot of games. Pearland is another school that seems to just reload every year, champions from 2010. They had a pretty easy go of it against Madison last week. What do you expect from Pearland this season? Well, you, I like what they do. Again, it's a very big, prominent program, and they just kind of plug and play. Tony Heath does a tremendous job over there. I mean, he's, he's one of the deans in high school football coaching, one of the only ones that has a state championship ring. And when his school split, it was shocking that they ended up winning that state championship. Dawson loaded as well, and he's also getting picked off. Uh, because Manville, right down the street, is a tremendous team also. Now they're in Class 5 as well. Right, and they were victorious. They were victorious last uh, last night against Spring. Right. Uh, uh, we love Manville. They were our preseason number two team. Shane McCarley, the quarterback right there. Kyron Parker, tremendous skill player at the receiver heading to Texas A&M. They're just getting their feet under them a little bit. Spring showed out really well. They have a sophomore quarterback that's a talent. He was a newcomer of the year in that district. But I like Manville. They also play North Shore. The, you know, what I like this year is a lot of these big-time programs are playing very tough teams. The Woodlands playing Skyline, KD, Hightower as well. We look at 17-5A, the Cy Fair schools. They always beat up on each other. I know it's cliche, but it's the truth every year. Absolutely, and you know what? They're really talented this year. Some of the bottom feeders could come up and, and steal a playoff spot. I thought Cy Ranch could do that. They've got a rebound after last or last night's game. But you got Cy Falls, you got Woods right here, who's a talented team both on offense and defensive side of the ball. Cy Fair 
again, nothing pretty, grinding it out, but uh, Coach P always does a great job up there. Now you have your own rankings, obviously. What went into developing your preseason rankings entering 2012? Well, I'll tell you what, Katie makes it easy. They make it easy at number one. They're tremendous, they're running, their backfield is tops in the state. Um, but then following that, we do a lot of um, spring football prospectuses. We also do a lot of camps and combines, do a lot of video. We are big on the seven on seven circuit. So that's kind of how we narrow, you know, who fits where uh, come July. Were you shocked as many of us were at the uh, regional uh, regional semifinal exit uh, by Katie last year, courtesy of the LaPorte Bulldogs? I tell you what, LaPorte can play some defense now. When you get down in their, in their stadium and their, their part of the city, they're really, really nasty. They're tough, but I tell you what, you know, Katie, I think, got punched in the mouth a little bit. They were shocked by it. Laporte, very good defensive team. Nothing great on offense, but I was very surprised at that uh, win by Laporte last year. Now, your first assignment for Channel 57, the Cube, on Thursday was the Battle of the Causeway. Lamarck dropping down to 3A. Didn't seem to have too much of a problem with Galveston Ball. Are they pretty much the favorite in 3A this season in the state? Well, I'll tell you what, they're in the top two or three. I like Cold Spring, but Lamarck is talented. Demond Mercer transferring from Chavez, going down there, gives him a playmaker, a quarterback. Um, Dr. Mike Jackson does a great job. Very hurry up offense. They're going to get people on their heels. They don't have a lot of players, but they got a lot of the players that they do have. Very, very skilled. Lawrence Montague anchors that defensive line at the end position. He's very good. Now, getting back to your magazine, I know football's uh, you know it's the biggest sport in Texas, but there's a lot more sports and a bigger following, and you cover them all. We do. We we really enjoy covering volleyball. Volleyball in the city of Houston and the state of Texas is really getting to where uh, California is across the state. A lot of talent, a lot of national programs. Cover a lot of baseball as well. Baseball is super hot. Basketball, we have the number one and number four players in the country and the Harrison Twins that play at Travis. They're going to be entering their senior year in 2012. They made the state tournament last year. NBA players, you can already see it in the next couple of years. There'll be lottery picks in the NBA. And Vibe Magazine is a free publication. Tell our uh, audience where they can find it here locally in Houston. Yeah, uh, Vibe Magazine, uh, Kroger's, Sports Authority, Barcelona, all the schools, high traffic areas, games like this. We also do a lot of AU basketball tournaments, volleyball banquets, things of that nature. So we try and canvas the city. As we come full circle and we come back to BBVA Compass Stadium, your thoughts on what we saw here in the first half between Kyle Collins and Cy Woods. Week zero, chalk it up to that in this first half, especially on the Cy Woods side. Absolutely. Week zero, you see a lot of just errors, which is great about high school football because anything can happen mm -hmm. at any time. Um, but I like what, you know, both of them are hanging in there. Cy Woods got penalized a couple times on some big plays that could have changed the complexion of this game. But if they can limit the turnovers in the second half, this is anybody's game. A two-night event here at BBVA Compass Stadium. What went behind getting this put together between Vibe the Magazine and, of course, BBVA Compass Stadium? Well, you know, this has been a dream of ours for four years. We've been in, we've been in publication for about four and a half years, and this has always been a dream of ours. We got matched up with BBVA, and they're trying to get into doing high school football games as well as playoff games down the road. Perfect marriage, great opportunity for us, and we've, you know, enjoyed the relationship so far. This is year one. We have ideas about year two? Absolutely. We're, we're already looking for teams for year two. Um, you know, same venue, great venue, and see if we can um, bring more excitement to Houston high school football. This is an awesome experience for us. I'm sure it is for you, as you have mentioned. Thanks for allowing us to be here and continued success here as you cover the 2012 football season and all the sports here in this calendar year. Appreciate it. And, hey, thanks for you all support as well. Matt Malatesta of Vite Magazine. When we return, we'll have more. We'll look at scores from around the greater Houston area today, last night, and on Thursday as we continue here on the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show.
And we welcome you back inside the booth. Thanking Matt, Mal uh, Matt Malatesta of Vipe the Magazine for spending a few moments with us at halftime. It is halftime here, seven nothing Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods in a, a week zero type of game. Let's say it like that. Let's run down some scores from the greater Houston area back on Thursday. Sam Rayburn got off to a 1-0 start after defeating Porter in an interdivisional, excuse me, interclassification matchup, 30-27 the final score, while Pasadena Memorial made it 2-0 for the Pasadena ISD schools on Thursday as they defeated Clements 33-7. It was Lamarck in the Battle of the Causeway, the collision on the Causeway. They defeat Galveston Ball 35-12 while Huntsville in a 4A matchup defeated Humble 39-7. It was Elsick over Kingwood 20-10, while Maid Creek shut out Cy Springs 41-0. And MacArthur up in the greater Aldine area got their first win of the season by de defeating Davis 33-6. We look back at scores from last night. Brazoswood defeated Westbury in a shutout 29-0, while Dulles shut out Hastings 22-0. Manville were able to defeat Spring 35 to 21. Deer Park got off to a 1 0 start by defeating Clear Lake 29 to 6. And Deer Park will be featured next week here on the game of the week against Spring when they go up to George Stadium. It was Dayton over Elkins 17 to 6, while Texas City defeated Dickinson 44 to 14. Pearland dispatched of Madison 33 to 3, while Morton Ranch defeated Tomball 48 14. Port Arthur Memorial clings to a three nothing, or excuse me, a three-point victory as they defeated the Central Jaguars out of Beaumont. South Houston lost to Summer Creek 69 to 28. And a bit of a surprise, not that North Shore won, but just by the margin of victory that they won, they defeated uh, Clear Springs from League City 47 to seven. Hightower over Eisenhower 21-12 got a little bit of a revenge after losing to Eisenhower at Thorne Stadium last season in week zero. Kempner defeated Seven Lakes 15 to 10, while a -Leaf Taylor defeated Bel Air by 20, 29 to nine. And we talked about it earlier, the epic OT game at Klein Memorial Stadium, where Klein Oak defeated Langham Creek 63 to 56. Cy Falls defeated Oak Ridge 42 nothing. Atascacita scored 31 unanswered points to defeat Doby 31 to six. Uh, Lamar defeated Klein Forest 33 to three, while the Westfield Mustangs easily handled the Aldean Mustangs 43 to seven. In the Spring Branch ISD rivalry game between Memorial and Stratford, it was the Mustangs on top 34 to 14 when all was said and done. Yates defeated Wheatley 30 to six. North Forest 54, Jones six. Clearbrook losing to Laporte in overtime 20 to 14. Laporte without their college prospect, Jose Scott. It was Alvin losing to Friendswood 28 to seven. And that will wrap up scores from the greater Houston area from week zero on this first Friday night from last night and earlier on Thursday. We'll step aside as the Klein Collins band comes off the field. We'll step aside, come back with more here on the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center, where a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Result-oriented, responsible, and reputable. Those are just a few of the words that could be used to describe Metter Staffing, one of Houston's largest staffing services. Metter has gained a superior reputation over the past four decades, serving Houston's employers, providing all types of direct hire, contract, contract to hire, temporary, and temp to hire job candidates. If you have a job to fill or looking for a job, call Metter Staffing at 713-941-0616. Follow Metter on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Metter Staffing. They know the people you need to know. 
Are you a fanatic? Open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit union of the Houston Texans. Life is a road you travel with many destinations, like college for the kids, a new house, and retirement. I am Earl Thompson, your neighborhood State Farm agent, and I can do more than ever to guide you with a State Farm insurance and financial review. You'll get a clear picture of where you stand now and a way to help you plan for where you want to be. Visit me on the web, earlthompson.biz, to schedule your free insurance and financial review. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Safety is your goal. Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Welcome back to the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. 7-0 Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods. Michael Silvers, Brent Moody, Jarrell Branch back in the booth. Your thoughts on the first half? I mean, we can easily say chalk it up to week zero, but we've seen some good positive plays especially from Cy Woods. Unfortunately for them, penalties have brought them back. Yeah, they've had a lot of penalties in the first half. That opening drive for them, it really looked like they were going to come out here and it really enforce their will on Klein Collins, but then something happened in the next drive. Klein Collins really completely turned their defense around. We're getting in the backfield. Nate German's been running for his life since that first possession, and, and if you're not going to give him any time to get the ball down the field, and, <laughs> right, and he's running away from Derek Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Because Thomas is coming around the edge and getting him quite a few times. I think they sacked him six times right. in the first half. But it, it's not just him. Casey Massey's getting back there. Eric Parsons also getting penetration into the this backfield. whole defense yeah. is getting yeah. back there. I mean, this is one of those things. It's like they made a, a quick little adjustment. They're like, you guys can't block us. And that's how they really feel. You can really see it out there on the field. They seem like they're unstoppable as far as that front seven and getting back there. And – Nate German, when he has time, he's played well. But he's not stepping into his passes because he's rushing the ball so quick, you know, so much. Oh, exactly. He's, he's been feeling the pressure. He's been hit numerous times. He's been sacked at least six times. And when they've given him time, he's found open targets down the field. But they're sending so much pressure that if, you, if you're able to give German a little bit of time, somebody is open down the field. You've just got to give him enough time to find him. Right. And the, the, the slant plays. Were, uh, were working pretty good. Uh, when German was able to connect, again, one was brought back. The other did go for a huge gain. And now for Klein Collins, their sole touchdown on a three-yard run by Blake Jackson, which was really set up by a nice pass play and a good run after the catch by Jordan Thomas. I've been really impressed with Blake Jackson, the way he's managed the game, the way he sits back there. He's very patient. He stays in the pocket. And, and he, he's really going off of instinct instead of forcing things to happen. And uh, that's what you want from a quarterback. And I can just only imagine how the offseason was, you know, for the quarterback, you know, race uh, for the starting position and for him to come, you know, ahead. You know, he must have really worked, you know, hard uh, this past offseason to get, get his game right to be able to, you know, come from junior varsity to varsity starter. Well, and also, they, they, they've just got to be more consistent offensively. There's nothing really that Cy Woods is doing defensively to cause any of the errors for Klein Collins. They're, in, for, they're inflicting the errors on themselves. If they can have some more consistent play offensively, they can run away with this game. Very good. That wraps up the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. Who are you going to call? Call Champion and stop by this Labor Day. Mention Legacy Sports Network. Get $1,000 off a new car or $1,000 added to your trade-in. See CJ at Champion Chevrolet, I-45, and Beltway 8. That wraps up the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show. When we return, we'll get you set for the second half of play. 7-0 Klein Collins here at BBVA Compass Stadium on Fox Sports Southwest. Just can't wait. Come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, 
The doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. footage was captured at a local grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There, he just got 10 cents back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. Metter Staffing Services has one of the largest temporary health divisions in the Houston area. Each week, the company pays over 2,000 temporaries, working on many and varied assignments. Metter Staffing can help your company when you have needs for your employees. Call us at 713-941-0616 to speak with one of our experienced staffing consultants who can assist you with your staffing challenges. That number is 713-941-0616. They now offer video resumes as a job-seeking tool. Ask about it today. Metter Staffing. They know the people you need to know. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Start of the second quarter from BBVA Compass Stadium here in Houston. 7-0 Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods with Brent Moody and Jarrell Branch on Michael Silvers. Keys to the second half. Well, for Klein Collins, they got to come out here and score on this opening possession and give themselves a little more of a lead. For Cy Woods, they've got to come out here and have a big defensive stand this first possession for Klein Collins and get themselves some good field position. Cy Woods' offensive line are really going to have to ste step up and take some pride in the game. They've been getting beat defense, you know, by uh, Klein Collins' defensive line and these linebackers, and they just really have to sit back, relax. They all know their zones. They know their reads. They just need to relax and take care of business. Let's run down the first half stats for Klein Collins. 81 yards on the ground, 99 yards passing for Blake Jackson. The only touchdown scored on a three-yard run by the quarterback. 180 total offensive yards in the first 24 minutes for the Tigers. Eight first downs. The uh, Tigers were two of five on third downs. Penalized twice, two, yard, two times for 15 yards. Turned it over on a fumble, had a time of possession of 12 minutes, 37 seconds. For Cy Woods, 24 yards on the ground rushing, 20 yards passing for German, 44 yards of total offense in the first half. Seven first downs for Trent Faith's team. They were one for seven on third downs, penalized six times for 30 yards. Their time of possession, 11 minutes, 23 seconds. The penalties really killed them, and we talked about it in the last segment of the Champion Chevrolet Halftime Show, just how some of those big plays they did have were nullified by penalties. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it has to deal with exhaustion. It's very, very humid out here. It's very warm out here on this field, and you can see the players for Cy Woods. They were exhausted, especially the defense, but also on the offense. And so then you get lackadaisical once you get a little tired, so their conditioning comes into play. Yeah, no matter how many two-a-days you run, you're still not ready for this kind of humidity and game-time extremities. Chase McLaughlin will kick it off for Cy Woods. High end over in kick, a short kick. Bounces at the 12 for Jordan Thomas. He bobbled it. Scramble for it at the 16-yard line, and it is Cy Woods' ball. This is exactly what Cy Woods needed to start this second half so they can have some type of momentum. They need some type of positivity. He waited for it to bounce. He slowed up, and then he did Ooh. not look it in. You could see he looked ahead. And he was shaken up after that hit. 
Well, and I was discussing this uh, with some friends over the college game, and you know, I think that uh, the changing of the rules where they're going to get the ball out at the 25, it's really going to end up hurting more people because you're going to have more kids in the high school game that do these little pooch kicks or these little squib kicks, and then you're going to end up having more contact in the return game, which is what they're trying to eliminate, and I, I just think it's going to end up backfiring, and they should have kept the rules the way it was. Right, and the uh, UIL did, uh, you know, doing their research and due diligence and concussion research, uh, made some rule changes to kickoffs and, you know, touchbacks now. The offense will come out and start on the 25-yard line and, you know, we've seen the era of the pooch kick and uh, sometimes you see contact and uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, fare well for some of the uh, parties involved. Uh, we want to welcome you to kickoff week presented by First Community Credit Union, 7 nothing Klein Collins. Let's go ahead and step aside. We're five seconds in to the third quarter. And the Tigers are up. Can't wait. Come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Well, fantastic news. Jordan Thomas walks off the field under his own power. That's always great news after taking a pretty stiff hit on the kickoff to start the second half. And off the turnover, Cy Woods with excellent field position. They'll scrimmage from the Tigers 15. This is the deepest they've been in this entire night. They begin with a handoff to Sam Stewart, and he will run into Christian Snow. A pickup of one down to the 15. We mentioned earlier Snow was an all-district player, a district newcomer of the year in District 13-5A last season. Sam Stewart was a name that we called out a lot during the first possession when they had a lot of positive gains, a lot of positive yards. But then it seemed like they didn't give him the ball at all, you know, that whole first half. He, he was like nowhere to be found. I remember that one series where he and uh, Ebby ran into each other in the backfield. He was a little shaken up from that and then wasn't out there numerous series in a row. Second down and nine for the Wildcats. German surveys the defense out of the shotgun, passes over the middle and in a tight window. He cannot find Duncan. Jeremy Winchester has been all over the field. He's so fast. He has such great catch-up speed. And he reads the play the entire way and does a great job of getting his right hand in there to bat down the ball. You have to be kind of an impressive player to uh, come up to the varsity level and wear the number of the most productive player in the school's history. <laughs> Third down and nine, referring to Shane Rhodes. Scrambling, German throws to the end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown! What a catch by Sam Stewart. What concentration to be able to haul that in. He is on his back and still Focused on the ball and is able to make the catch. The elusiveness and then the accuracy. And it was even slapped away, but great poise in the end zone by Stewart. And really, it's like basketball. He just kind of boxed him out, was able to get his body in between him and the ball. Good job. They capitalize on the Klein Collins turnover on the kickoff to start the second half. This is something that Cy Woods have been trying to do the first half and just could not get anything done. The ball just would not fall their way. A 13-yard touchdown pass, and the extra point is good from McLaughlin, and we are tied at 7, 46 seconds into the third quarter. When we return, Klein Collins will get another chance on the kickoff. We are tied here on Fox Sports Southwest. Open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit union of the Houston Texans.
We are tied at seven early on here in the third. McLaughlin will kick it off for Cy Woods. They capitalize on the fumble from the opening kickoff to start the second half in a high pooch kick. Fair catch is made, and then trying to advance the ball, you can't do that. Kevin Farmer. That's not allowed, but Klein Collins will get a chance on offense here in the second half. They'll start on their own 29. Here's your latest drive summary as Cy Woods are on the board and tied things up. 13-yard touchdown pass from Nate German to Sam Stewart. Caps off a drive of three plays, 15 yards, and only 46 seconds off the clock. The extra point attempt by McLaughlin was good. It's 7-7, Klein Collins and Cy Woods. First touchdown pass of the season for the senior Nate German through eight touchdown passes, or excuse me, seven touchdown passes a season ago. Trey White is the running back to start things off here in the third quarter for Klein Collins. They will scrimmage from their own 29, and we're tied at seven. Option, pitch left, and White looks for blockers. Wow. Couple of moves, and he has stopped short of the 35. Good tackle, sure-handed tackle by Eamon Alley in the middle linebacker at the 34-yard line. That's a gain of five for Trey White. Yeah, that play just never seemed to develop. The only problem when you're uh, doing that little stutter set move with someone in front of you, there's ten other guys on the field. <laughs> and the guy just got plowed from the back. That's a hard play to set up. I mean, it, it just looked bad from the beginning, as, you know, as far as the, the read went. And uh, he didn't have much room to run. Yeah, he was expecting there to be some blockers out in front of him, and he was having to do it all on his own. But did not account for the other guys on the field. It's not a great feeling. <laughs> and an official's timeout as Tyler Tozino has been over at the 30-yard line. But It's one of those things where the humidity and the heat of Houston, and the fact that it rained a little bit earlier on, and a lot of these kids, I mean, they've scrimmaged. Uh, they, you know, they don't really participate in any seven-on-seven -seven drills, especially the, the linemen. Right. But you get into the, the humidity of week zero and things like this sort of happen, and well, and a lot, a lot of the, the two-a-day stuff, they're, they're not in pads. They're not in all this gear dealing with the, yeah. all the humidity with all of that on also. So I think you might want to start incorporating some of that into your two-a-days just to get acclimated just to the heat. But it's so hard. I mean, <laughs> you, don't, you, know, you, had, you, you know, over the last five years or so, we've had a lot of kids pass mm. out and get sick and do all those type of things. You want to try and prevent that as much as possible. Yeah, the kids' health is always of a premium concern. Here's a pass on a slant. It Ooh. is complete. Up the middle of the field to Mikey Tanner. He's in to Cy Woods territory and taken down at the 48-yard line after a 21-yard pass play. Mike Jackson just threw that ball on a rope. I mean, just a great job of seeing his receiver and putting it right on his numbers. Well, DeAndre Davis did an outstanding job getting back into coverage to make a play because it really looked like he was about to run. Mikey Tanner was about to run away with that one. First down and 10 for the Tigers on the side Woods, 48-yard line as Parison comes in motion. Handoff to a new back in the ballgame for the Tigers and running around the right side is Jeremy Fair, his second, uh, uh, his second uh, carry of the game. Taken down at the 45 after a pickup of four. Well, he gets tripped up in the backfield and does an excellent job keeping his balance, staying on his feet, trying to get over there to the edge to pick up a few yards on that first down carry. Looks like we're going to see the backup quarterback come in in a wide receiver's position. Jared Huber was a backup last year to Tyler Staling, and in the offseason, Blake Jackson just proved to be the better quarterback of the two. He gets the nod as the number one to start the season. Huber in motion. And a snap back. Hand off to Fair, off tackle, left across the 40, and he keeps his legs turning for first down yardage, down to the 32. Another first down. Fair, real north and south runner, runs like how I imagine Jarius Bishop should run. Jarius Bishop, more of a hesitant, trying to finesse, and we saw Fair just lowering his shoulders and trying to run people over. That run good for 13 yards, and another Tiger first down, their 10th of the game. We are tied at seven with nine minutes to go. And Klein Collins, the offensive line did a great job that time with sealing those blocks so he was able to get upfield. Huber comes in motion to this side. Back on the ground to, uh, to Fair, and this time it is well scouted. Runs into the teeth of the defense inside Woods. That front four won't let him go much further than one yard. It's always good when you have a back that can fall forward, you know, and, and push the pile forward. He had the whole team on his back. 
And Huber got to come into the game and run about 40 yards back and forth. <laughs> good job blocking downfield. Trey White checks back in as the running back out of the shotgun on second down and nine. Another note, Marcus Goodson has not been in the game since the first half. Harrison in motion, option pitch left. They tried this earlier. They try it again and down to the 29 as DeAndre Davis takes down the ball carrier, Trey White. After a six-yard gain down to the 29, it'll be third down and short. It really looked like Davis went kind of high. He might have been able to get him with a face mask. His helmet ends up coming off in the long run. Future Texas Longhorn, which makes the person to my left very happy. It makes me very excited. That's why I'm paying attention to him. He needs to stay a little bit lower. <laughs> From the 29, it is third down and two. Option pitch to the other side, and Trey White to the 25. Down to the 10, Trey White touchdown. Wow. 3-7, Jordan Johnson had the angle on him. It just looked like he kind of gave up on the play. Or Trey White's just that fast. A Let's third down conversion. I think DeAndre Davis is actually out of the game because, in fact, his helmet came off. Uh-huh. And that's a problem. A third down conversion and a 29-yard touchdown run for Trey White, his first of the season. And Klein Collins are back out in front. It looked like Klein Collins recognized that DeAndre Davis wasn't in the game, so they ran to that side, mm -hmm. and they really took advantage of it. Good call by the offensive coordinator, Adrian Mitchell. As we await the PAT, Klein Collins will be forced to call their first time out here in the second half. When you're the home team, you have a natural advantage. You know the turf, the players, you know how they play the field, and you know how to work it to your advantage. It's the same in banking. With Community Bank of Texas, you get all the home team advantages of an independent bank who works for you. At Community, we have the flexibility to work with you in ways those mega banks can't or won't. So give yourself the home team advantage at Community Bank of Texas and bank where you live. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And if you're Klein Collins, you know at the juncture of this game, Cy Woods just came back. Took and advantage Michael, of actually, that was not a touchdown. Trey White stepped out at the three-yard line. Okay. And, and that, that was the call. Okay. It was a good call, too. I, I don't think anybody saw it. These Klein Collins coaches, they're upset. They're looking at the monitor up there, but it doesn't show it. I was right here five yards away. That was a very good call. He was out at the three. All right, very good. I appreciate it. We appreciate it up here. So it's going to bring up – it'll be first and goal just on the doorstep from the three. And the officials – Finally say, no touchdown. And then all the confusion, Klein Collins have to burn a timeout. So call it a 26-yard run for Trey White. And the score remains 7-7. Seven to seven. But perhaps it's only a matter of time. Let's take another look, see if he did step out. He's tippy-toeing. Oh, right there, it looks like. That, that's a tough call, but you know. That's a 50-50 call from up here. We don't see it. His foot touched the white line, but again, we're not down on the field. So Jay good call by out, the officiating crew. Out. Exactly. So first down and goal for the Tigers from the Wildcat three. Parison in motion oh. and flags. So after the 26-yard run and what was thought of as a touchdown, you burn a timeout, come back, and then you commit a false start. Yeah, and that's a problem in itself. I mean, you should be able to already have the play set. You know exactly what play you're going to run. They should have executed something right off the top. I don't know why there was so much confusion in that. Maybe it was just too much motion. Jared Huber checks back in the lineup for the Tigers. Now first down and goal from the eight-yard line. Third penalty charged tonight to Drew Sabota's team. At two penalties for 15 yards in the first half. Tanner and Parison. Well, now Parison will line up in the backfield alongside the quarterback, Blake Jackson. First and goal from the eight. And another, another timeout. Win. Drew Svoboda is hot at his offense. They have burnt their second timeout wow. early here in the third quarter. And we'll step aside. 7-7 seven, seven game, but Klein Collins, first down and goal from the eight when we return.
bigger. No, 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 bigger still. Ah. It's good to be king. This fall, experience king-size dining, shopping, merriment, and more at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Discount tickets are on sale now at Randall's, Walgreens, Wood Forest National Bank, and online at texrenfest.com. The Texas Renaissance Festival. Choose your own adventure. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room, open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Drew Sabota is getting all he wants and then some with our officiating crew led by Scott Johnson, our head official. There you see him right there on your screen at the 21 yard line. The Tigers have had to burn two timeouts here early. We're not even halfway through this third quarter. They had what they thought was a touchdown, ruled out of bounds at the three, forced to call a timeout. Then they come out of the timeout, commit a false start and then line up improperly in the eyes of their head coach who calls another timeout. And not only was he mad at his team, he was also mad at the officials and wanted to get his point across. Well, and Michael, the, the reason why he was upset at the official is because he thinks he should not have wasted that timeout, the first one originally called, because he thought it was a touchdown. That was the problem. Exactly, I, I, I believe that they should have had a more distinct call so he wouldn't have had to have burned that timeout. 7.28 remaining here in quarter number three of a 7-7 game. First down and goal for the Tigers on the Wildcat eight. Harrison is in the backfield along with Blake Jackson, the quarterback. Three receivers in the lineup. Tanner in a slot to the bottom of your screen. Jackson throws to the flats, caught. Harrison, touchdown. did a great job of delivering that ball. Oh, but I don't know if he had possession of that ball. I don't think that he did. That was a great job defensively. It looks like he got a hand in there and stripped that ball out. Depends on when it went out of bounds and perhaps if he had uh, crossed he, the plane of the goal line first. As it, he started it, to lose the ball, he wasn't to yeah, that point. He, he didn't make the, a football move. He didn't have two steps. I mean, there was a lot of things wrong with that play. 7.21 left and Rhett Peterson is good. 14 to seven, Klein Collins leads Cy Woods. They go back and forth here to start the third quarter. Kickoff comes your way next. It was captured at a local grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There. He just got 10 cents back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. Double digit pay raises are history. Now money's a lot harder to get a hold of and even harder to hang on to. That's why I, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson, would like to offer you a free discount double check. I will go through your car insurance policy to make sure you are getting the discounts you deserve and aren't leaving any money on the table. So call me, State Farm Agent Earl Thompson in Houston, because being there to help keep more of your money in your pocket is why I'm here. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back here at BBVA Compass Stadium, we're going to get another look here at the Parison touchdown. As you see Blake Jackson go back, he throws a great ball, but now pay attention. <clears throat> Doesn't look like he really has possession of the ball right there. The ball rolls down his leg, and it, to me it didn't seem like there was enough to, to call it a touchdown because it looked like the referee was looking at the pylon and not the ball. Peterson kicks it off. Ragusa takes it out from the end zone. 
And he won't get to the 20, stopped at the 19. So that's when taking a knee would be beneficial right. because then if you take a knee, you get the ball on the 25 due to the new rules set forth by the UIL in the offseason. And that's just one of those things they'll talk about in the film room. You know, it's, it's one of those perception things because as a kickoff returner, you always want to be able to try and take it out and do, do a Devin Hester and go for 93 yards or something like that. But you have to use good judgment because you want to put your team in the best position possible. We welcome you to kickoff week presented by First Community Credit Union from BBVA Compass Stadium, 7-16 to play in the third quarter. Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods, 14-7. Along with our crew, Brent Moody, Jarrell Branch in the booth, Michael Silver's with you. Delighted you're with us. Next week, Thursday night, up at Leonard George Stadium in spring for Deer Park in spring. The Deer winning against Clear Lake last night down in League City while spring fell to Manville. First and 10 for German and the Wildcats. A quick strike to the right side is complete to Nick Hooper to the 26-yard line for a seven-yard play. And that's something that Cy Woods needs right there. They need some quick little offensive plays to get a rhythm going so they can continue to march the ball down the field. Two receptions for Hooker, 21 yards tonight, second down and three. Pass left, caught, Mason Roberts. Out of bounds, forced out by Winchester. First down though to the 31 on a five yard play. I like what Sidewoods is doing. They're just kind of chipping away. We're gonna go ahead and give our best players the ball. If that ball was thrown a little bit more on target, he would have been able to, Mason Roberts would have been able to cut that ball in, but because it was so high, he had to actually take it outside and actually he actually ran right into the defense. Going back to the second quarter, now four straight completed passes by Nate German. We have a timeout on the field, 6.47 to play here in the third, 14-7, Klein Collins. This is the Fox Sports Southwest Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. Just can't wait. Come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room, open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Life is a road you travel with many destinations, like college for the kids, a new house, and retirement. I am Earl Thompson, your neighborhood State Farm agent, and I can do more than ever to guide you with a State Farm insurance and financial review. You'll get a clear picture of where you stand now and a way to help you plan for where you want to be. Visit me on the web, earlthompson.biz, to schedule your free insurance and financial review. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Fourteen seven, Klein Collins. So we welcome you back to kickoff week presented by First Community Credit Union. Well, we saw seven points in the first half. A three-yard touchdown run by Klein Collins and Blake Jackson. We've seen 14 points scored here in the third quarter. We've, I wonder what the adjustments were yeah, in we, the locker room at halftime. It seems like they just kind of relaxed, calmed down. They understand that it's just a game, you know what I mean? And, and for they, one thing, Cy Woods got the ball on the 15. Well, that's a good start, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and they, but they had good coverage down there as well, you know what I mean? So, and Cy you make your own opportunities. Yeah, and Cy Woods went in because they, they seemed defeated in the first half because they, they made a lot of penalties and they were hurting themselves, and now they're starting to put it together. Well, yeah, and getting those points on the board and then coming out here on this possession, they've really kept Nate German up on his feet, and they've done a good job of just having play calls where he's just dumping it out to, right. the, to the edge and chipping away at this defense. As long as they can keep him up on, on his feet and let him build some confidence, he can move the ball down the field. First down and 10 for the Wildcats as we resume play here in the third quarter. German out of the shotgun, four receivers in the lineup. Handoff, Stewart with a hole up the middle. Bowls his way out to the 38-yard line 
and picks up seven yards. I like how they're going back to the ground game and going up the middle. That's something that they did in the first uh, possession that they had. It was very, very positive possession, and Sam Stewart needs to have the ball in his hands so that he can this, so that they can be successful in offense. German scrambles, dumps it off, and it's complete to nice. Stewart with room to run. 40 across the 30 and down at the Tiger 28-yard line. Brent, I don't know if you heard me, but I said that they need to get the ball in Sam Stewart's hands. I don't know if you heard me, but I know I said that. I think I said they should go over the middle because Clint Collins has no defense over the middle deep. At all. And you are right. As fast as they are in their corner and their DB positions, like you would – Imagine that they would be able to cover deep middle of the field, but that's where Nate German's been picking them apart. Stewart last season, 19 receptions, 436 yards, and five touchdowns. He's the team leading receiver, six catches for 47 yards in terms of the amount of receptions. The leading receiver is Duncan with 59 yards on three catches. Nice. First down and 10 in Tiger territory. German flares it out left side, complete to Ragusa. Breaks a tackle inside the 20. Ragusa looking to get to the end zone. He'll be stopped 10 yards short at the 10. Casey Massey on the tackle for Klein Collins. We are looking at a different offense here. That's an 18 yard they're, play. They're just calling different plays. Nate German's in a three step drop and he's getting the ball out of his hand. He's three step drop, playing that back foot and it, the ball's gone. Yeah, and the, it's the confidence that you see in him now. He's not hesitating at all. Hand off, is. and it is Ebi Obiamin, and he's in for the touchdown. Straight ahead, Obiamin has uh, given Cy Woods an opportunity to tie it up. Untouched to the end zone, Ebi Obiamin. And McLaughlin out to tie it up. It's been a completely different second half. And we're just over halfway through here in the third. It's amazing to see the turnaround that Cy Woods has, has had in this second half. Kick is good from McLaughlin. 5.51 to play in the third. And from BBVA Compass Stadium, we are tied at 14. This is Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. Reputable. Those are just a few of the words that could be used to describe Metter Staffing, one of Houston's largest staffing services. Metter has gained a superior reputation over the past four decades, serving Houston's employers, providing all types of direct hire, contract, contract to hire, temporary, and temp to hire job candidates. If you have a job to fill or looking for a job, call Metter Staffing at 713 941 0616. Follow Metter on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Metter Staffing, they know the people you need to know. Well, we had a game in the first half. It was 7-0. Now it's 14-14. We really have a game here. As things have picked up in the second half, especially here in the third quarter, we are tied at 14. We'll give you the scoring specifics in just a moment as McLaughlin has the ball teed up at the 40-yard line, ready to deliver back to Klein Collins. Parison from the 10. He drops the ball. Tries to adjust across the 20. Mm. He's got one man to beat, and that's the kicker, McLaughlin. Parison, no one will catch him. Josh Parison, touchdown Tigers, no flags. A 90-yard kickoff return for the Tiger touchdown. He did a great job of keeping his eyes upfield. As soon as he bobbles, he looks up. He did a great job of reading his blocks. You know, sometimes that, that slight little bobble just puts the, the coverage team in the wrong position. It just seems like the coverage team got too deep, and when she make when she make a most of a miss, and all you gotta do is beat the kicker. Money's on that return guy. Right. Josh Parrison, all of last season, had 12 receptions for 224 yards, and he was one of the Three main targets for Tyler Stanley, and of course the main target 
was Shane Rhodes, who now plays for the Boise State Broncos and had a lot of impact last night in the loss to Michigan State as the extra point is good. And now it is a 21-14 Klein Collins lead. Let's go back to the last two scoring plays for these two schools, Britt Moody. 11-yard touchdown run by Obi Amon caps off a drive of six plays. 81 yards, 1 minute and 24 seconds off the clock. The extra point attempt for McLaughlin was good. That score coming with 5.51 left in the third. It was 14-14. to 14. Then on the ensuing kickoff, 90-yard kick return by Pearson. The extra point attempt was good. That score coming with 5.38 left in the third. It's 21-14, to 14, Klein Collins on top of Cy Woods. You just have to wonder what they addressed <laughs> right. in, half -time, in the locker yeah, room. I don't know if they had like those little Gatorade shoes or what, but something... <laughs> Something happened. They could have thrown, you know, probably had a commercial in there if they would have taped it. But uh, something happened, and they, they really got motivated. And, I mean, these are two different teams in the second half. They start trading body blows, but who will land that knockout punch? Cy Woods had a lengthy drive in their last offensive possession. Their first possession of the second half started on the Klein Collins 15. Peterson, the lefty, will kick it off for the Tigers. Ragusa and Roberts are back deep, standing on the goal line. Ragusa from the one. Slight bobble. And Ooh. he is upended downfield by Derek Thomas at the 19. Derek Thomas has just had one heck of a game, whether it be on defense or special teams, but he's been all over the place. Thought to myself, well, if he bobbled it, just like Parison, he could he be off be to gone. the races. Right. Not so much, says Derek Thomas. There's just been a couple of fluke plays here and there in this third quarter. It's going to really come down to which team is more disciplined, which team is more consistent offensively is going to end up coming away with this game. Both teams made the playoffs last season for Klein Collins, an opening round loss to the Woodlands after going deep in 2010. Cy Woods eliminated by the Katy Tigers in the area round at the Berry Center last November. Both teams ready to come back here in 2012, make deeper runs. Here's German scrambling, and on the improv, he crosses the 30 and takes it out to the 33-yard line for a 14-yard run. First yeah. down for Cy Woods. Pressure came from the outside, and he just stepped up into the pocket and saw he had some space right up the middle, and a great job to just decide to tuck the ball and pick up those yards. Yeah, good job of not hesitating. It seemed like earlier in the game he would, he would sit back a little bit longer. Screen pass, Davis, check it, Stewart. Stewart over the 35 and tackle down at the 36-yard line. That'll be good for a four-yard reception. It looks like Klein Collins kind of uh, sluggish defensively. Cy Woods needs to line him up and just go at this defense. Frankie Griffin in on the stop. Got a player who needs to tie his shoe the Klein Collins defense. Now he looks like he, he kind of hurt himself. Uh, it took him a while to get up. And I think that's Frankie Griffin. His friends were, his teammates were trying to pick him up off the ground. You know, we walked this field earlier, you know, before the game, and this is one of, number one, these kids don't really, they don't play games on all grass fields. That's right, and that's one of the things that we brought up with both co coaches down in pregame was, you know, you don't get a chance to play on this. Right. And, and you know, they practice also, on grass, but it, it's not this grass. But the, uh, the, grass. the fields that they play on with that field turf, they're, they're kind of domed a little. Yeah, so, crowned. So the yeah. crown, so the water will run off. This field is completely flat. Yeah. And, but it was it's really, meant for soccer. Yeah, it was really, really hard, though. We walked on that field, and, me, and that's the first thing me and Brent said. We were like, this field is like, it's hard like concrete almost. Yeah, it, it, it's, well, it has concrete no concrete below it. And I believe it's football. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six as we resume action here in the third with inside five minutes to go. Handoff to wow. Ibby. And wow. Ibby across the wow. 50. Obi Amin inside the 30. And out of bounds in Ooh. Tiger territory at the 29-yard line. That's balance. That is a 35-yard rumbling job done by Ibi Obi Amin. And another Wildcat first down. I mean, just look the way he keeps his feet moving. Now, that's exactly how a running back should run. You always keep your feet moving, and that's why he was able to keep his balance. 12th first down of this game, 
And another timeout. Klein Collins have called their final timeout here in the second half. They have no more, and we've got 447 remaining in the third. It is 21-0 Tigers, but the Wildcats are driving. Employer needing to hire personnel, then you need to talk with Matter Staffing Services. Matter Staffing has been in business for over four decades and is one of the largest staffing services in the Houston area, servicing a national market. Matter Staffing has specialists wanting to serve you in the areas of engineering, accounting, administrative support, industrial, IT, marketing, and many other job categories. They have seven locations to serve your staffing needs. Call 713 941 and they can direct you to the office nearest you. Matter Staffing on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston, 21-14, Klein Collins. And it is first down and 10 for Cy Woods on the Tiger 29-yard line. Stewart back in the game in the backfield along with German out of the shotgun. Handoff, Stewart stumbles a bit and rumbles down to the 25-yard line. Tackled on the play by Eric Parsons, senior nose tackle. And a gain of five for Stewart. Yeah, Cy Woods, is, they're definitely doing a lot different as far as plays are called, everything is different from what they did in the first half. They're really getting off the ball and moving the ball down the field. Second down, German. Decided to improvise, scramble, Good and tackle. is tackled in the open field by Christian Snow, limiting German to a two-yard gain. That's a great job by Christian Snow to go ahead and break down on the athletic Nate German in the open field. Saw the pressure. And the linemen from Cy Woods are just a split second faster than they were in the first half. They're actually getting there and making blocks, making guys have to try to go around them. Third and three, German fires over the middle, oh. out of the reach of the intended target, David Burrell. So now a crucial fourth down for Trent Faith and his coaching staff. What do they try to do here on fourth down and three? You have a wide open um, side of the field on, the, on the, the near side of the field. I would go ahead and expose that, run a sweep, get those three yards, and then keep uh, heading towards the end zone. The Wildcats will go for it on fourth and three from the 21. Hand off Stewart. That's the wrong Breaks one. a tackle, but will be short. He, he almost, almost got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Parsons third. with the initial penetration to slow Stewart up in the backfield. Along with Hunter Lynham. Casey Massey also over there to help finish it off. And just, just the gang tackling mentality of yeah. Klein Collins is what finally brought him down. They just, as we've said before, move so well to the ball and, and there's no cutback lanes at all. The turnover on downs as the Tiger defense hold on fourth. Leading 21-14 with 3.40 to go here in the third. And on a, on a play like that, Cy Woods, you, your athletes they're athletic enough so they can, and fast enough that they could get outside, and they've been able to penetrate. And I'm, I'm kind of confused why they went to that short side of the field. Jackson and company back on the field. Parison in motion. Had a 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown earlier mm. here in the third quarter, and a handoff right up to gut goes Jarius Bishop for two yards. Five carries for Bishop, seven yards so far tonight. That time he seemed a little more decisive which hole he wanted and kind of hit it with a little more <clears throat> explosion through the line, but still not a lot doing on that right side. Second down and eight. Fake on a pitch, straight ahead. Nice. It is Jackson for a first down to the 32-yard line. It's really a good, solid play call on the part of Klein Collins. He just barely got through that hole. The hole wasn't really big, but he was just small enough and fast enough to make it through. Alfred Pullum leading the way defensively for the Wildcats, but not after a first down achieved by Blake Jackson on the run of 11 yards. Thank you, I'm you guys. West Virginia commit offensive guard. Uh, Ty Chesno will not return. All right. Unfortunate for them, obviously, but Right now, Klein Collins 
on the move to try to take a two touchdown lead. First and 10, they'll scrimmage from their own 33. Hand off to Bishop. Bishop off tackle right mm. and takes it out. Rumbles, rumbles his way to the 40 yard line. Be good enough for eight yards. Bishop now six carries for 27 yards. He's, the running backs are doing a good job of getting up field this second half, you know, as they didn't do that as much in the first half. It seems like they have their eyes up down the field more. Second down and two Trey for the White. Tigers on the 40-yard line, as Trey White, Brent was about to mention, checking into the lineup. A bunch of different looks from Klein Collins, getting mm -hmm. different guys out into the onto the field. Rotating their players, rotating their offensive formation in out of a flex bone. Handoff to the fullback Bishop, very close to the first down marker. And Looks see, that's like a he's good. He's going to get it from that mark. That's a good setup play for later to go ahead and fake that in the middle, and then go ahead and pitch it out. It's going to be the 13th first down for Klein Collins so far in the game. Back up to the line of scrimmage quickly and under center it is Jackson. Motion man is Trey White, gets the pitch and on the left side looks for a lead block, gets it from Parison. First down inside the 40 of Wildcat territory. Down to the 38 yard line, a 24 yard run for Trey White. Parison does a great job of getting out front and finding someone to block. They didn't get too much of them, but enough. And that's all you need. Exactly. And now from the 37-yard line in Cy Woods territory, Klein Collins on the move. Down to 120 remaining in the third quarter here at BBVA Compass Stadium. Non-district matchup to wrap up week zero and to wrap up the BBVA Compass kickoff classic. Parison in motion, handoff to the fullback and Jarius Bishop. Will pound his way down inside the 35, taken down at the 33. A four-yard pickup for Jarius Bishop. I'm liking the aggression uh, from the backs because the fact is when there's not a hole, they're creating something still. They're still falling forward. They're still moving their feet. This is something that we didn't see in the first half. Is that a shoe? Thomas and Edmonds, the receivers to the top of your screen with Edmonds in a slot. Trey White in motion, handoff, and it is fair this time. And Jeremy Fair takes it down to the 30. About a three-yard pickup, third down and short, and that will likely bring us to the end of the third quarter. Fair's really made the most of his opportunities when he's gotten into the backfield. He's picking up positive yards on each carry. There's been six Tigers to carry the football tonight. And that brings us, well, we got to, well, there we go. The clock stopped momentarily, and Klein Collins will take a 21-14 lead to the fourth quarter, and when we return, it'll be third down and short for the Tigers. Safety is your goal. Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. You a fanatic? Open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit union of the Houston Texans. Third down and three as we start the fourth quarter, 21-14. Klein Collins on top, and here's Trey White on third down to the end zone. Touchdown. This time he doesn't step out of bounds. Touchdown, 
Great play call. Outstanding vision by Trey White getting out to the edge. Great block. Yeah. Woo, two piercing, of them. Piercing the entire, <laughs> the entire night. I mean, he's there, uh, Kevin Walter just gets out there and does the blocking for him, but he can catch. Trey White also over the 100 yard mark tonight. On six rushes, a touchdown off 102 yards on the ground. A two touchdown lead for the Tigers as Rhett Peterson is on to tack on the extra point. When they started out one of four on third down, they're now four of seven. Kick is good. Eight seconds into the fourth quarter, 28-14 Klein Collins back in a moment after this. Those are just a few of the words that could be used to describe Metter Staffing, one of Houston's largest staffing services. Metter has gained a superior reputation over the past four decades, serving Houston's employers, providing all types of direct hire, contract, contract to hire, temporary, and temp to hire job candidates. If you have a job to fill or looking for a job, call Metter Staffing at 713-941-0616. Follow Metter on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Metter Staffing, they know the people you need to know. Klein Collins now with some separation. 28-14 is your score. We'll tell you how they did it in just a second. And now the Wildcats will have to play a little bit of catch up and get a defensive stop. They're going to have a chance here in the fourth. We welcome you back to kickoff week presented by First Community Credit Union. And you're watching Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. Nine yards back from the 40, Rhett Peterson has it teed up and is ready to deliver. This is Mason Roberts. A yard in the end zone, hesitates. To the 20, right side 30, across the 40. There is a flag down at the 40, but that is going to be on the Klein Collins side of the football field. It'll be a penalty on them, so obviously the Wildcats will decline the penalty. We take another look at this solid return from Mason Roberts. And so far, bobbles and slight hesitations have proven to be fruitful. Most definitely, he did a great job of just being aware of where he was, because as soon as he caught it, he looked down to see where he was. Well, he was like, you know what, let me go ahead and take it out. Well, and coverage is, is all about timing, and if you if you slow up the time or if you speed up the um, <coughs> how quickly the cover team gets down there they're not in the proper lanes and that opens up different lanes for the return man and did an outstanding job taking advantage of on that one let's check in with the latest scoring summary for the klein collins tigers it's a 30 yard touchdown run by trey white capping off a eight play drive of 79 yards three minutes 48 seconds off the clock the extra extra point attempt by peterson was good that score coming with 11:52 left in the fourth it's 28 to 14. handoff to Obi Amin, goes left, then gets track, stuck in traffic, reverses his field, and will pull tacklers down to the 32-yard line. 16 yards for E.B. Obi Amin, the senior, has a touchdown for Cy Woods tonight, picks up a huge amount of yards down to the 32. Yeah, 16 yards, it looked like he ran about 40 to get him, goes all the way to the left, and then rolls it back around to the right side of the field. Looked like he was gonna be able to break it for a while, just. Too many Klein Collins guys with the angle. Mason yeah. Roberts, who is now the quarterback in on this series for Cy Woods. We have a flag down. Roberts is taken down at the 27-yard line. E.B. Obiami, Amon, he has some of the best feet that I've seen so far tonight. I mean, personal foul, face mask on Klein Collins. He continues to keep his feet moving, and that's something that you see from a great running back. Hey Never guys, say I, die I, attitude. Go ahead, Jay. I, I finally found out what uh, happened to Marcus Goodson. He will be out for the remainder of this ball game with a potentially a uh, broken collarbone. Guys. Oh no! Yeah, not good. It was on that block. Yep. This field is hard. He gave his collarbone, and he gave it all for his team. Mason Roberts, the quarterback, he hands it off to Stewart. Stewart inside the ten. Tackled made by Christian Snow. Pick up a six down to the eight. And this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Cy Woods. 
trailing now by 14 to get a quick score here to cut the lead in half. They're just so much more efficient, and you can just see the confidence just brewing through them. Second down and four. Oh. Mason Roberts drops the snap, and the Tigers have recovered. Mm. Covered by Hunter Lyman. And your starting quarterback is standing behind you on the sideline, wanting to get into the game. And it's a crucial time to be to have your backup and have him out there <clears throat> turn the ball over. But your defense has made uh, plays for you so far tonight. They got to step up and they've got to stop this Klein Collins team right now. One of the things, if we can touch on the Marcus Goodson situation, if indeed that is the case. You know, coming into this season. Marcus Goodson really needed to have a big year. He was being looked at by Texas A&M. Of course, that's where his older brother, Michael, went to college. And last season, he started off hot, then kind of tailed off around that DeCaney game where we saw Ellis and Powell take more of a role right. as the primary running back. And then Goodson, late in the season, came back and was a force again for the Tigers. And if what, is, if what Jay has reported is true, that's awfully tough for Marcus Goodson. Handoff. This is Bishop. Bishop lowers his shoulder over the 15. It will be stopped at the 17-yard line. And a gain of five for Jerry's Bishop. Nine carries for Bishop, 28 yards tonight. 90 seconds removed from the start of the fourth quarter and a 28-14 Tiger Edge. Klein Collins has done a good job of controlling the clock this second half as well, doing a good job of balancing out Run-in pass. Fake on a pitch, and on second down, this is Jackson. He stopped a yard shy at the 20. It's always, it's always like you hold your breath a little bit when you see the, your, a play for your quarterback to run up the middle, especially when you have linebackers like Cy Woods has. All right, they definitely instilled that role. Also, your helmet comes off. You have to come off for a play. Okay. And that's how they scored that last, well, he stepped out of bounds, but that's how they had that big play last time because Darius was outside, out the game. You gotta be impressed with DeAndre what Davis. Yeah, and you have to be impressed with what Klein Collins has been able to do to try to take Davis out of the game. He hasn't been a big force defensively for Cy Woods tonight. He lines up in linebacker's position at the bottom of your screen on the outside of the right guard. Here's a screen pass in Parison. That one snuffed out tremendously. Good job. And on the tackle was Miles Ogun Yomain. And that's just one of those things. I mean, he went underneath the block. Great technique because he just sniffed it out from the get go. Mm, so now four of eight on third down attempts are Klein Collins, and they're going to have to punt here on this fourth. First punt of the second half for Joe Shreve. Had two punts earlier of 49 and 31 yards in the first half. Ragusa back deep to receive. End over end kick. Delivered by Shreve and from midfield. Mm. This is Ragusa and he, oh, just great downfield coverage by the Klein Collins Tigers. 37 yard punt, no return. Cy Woods gets the ball back. Great field position, half the field to work with. 8.32 remaining here in tonight's game and a 28-14 deficit for the Wildcats. Let's see which quarterback they send back out on the field to see if Nate German is shaken up a bit or if they were just trying to run a different offense in the last possession. Next Thursday, to be Thursday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center here on Fox Sports Southwest. We'll come your way from Leonard George Stadium in spring for a week one non-district matchup between the 0-1 Spring Lions and the 1-0 Deer Park Deer. Coverage will begin at 645 right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Com. First and 10 from midfield. Quarterback is indeed Mason Roberts. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Screen pass to Obi Amin. Now he's going to throw. Throw it down the sideline, and it is incomplete. Oh. We're trying to locate Ragusa. Three Klein Collins defensemen in the area. Frankie Griffin had a good chance to try to take that one back. Obi Amin kind of pump fakes about twice. If he just lets it go the first time, I think his wide receiver is open. That pump fake just allowed for the defensive backs to get down the field. 
That brings up second down and 10 for the Wildcats. Scrimmaging from the 50-yard line. Quick pass right side, turning around to make the catch is Jake Seabach. Seabach ran out of bounds at the 47-yard line, a three-yard reception. It's interesting that they put Mason Roberts into the game when Nate German was doing such a great job this second half. He was really getting into a rhythm. I don't know if he's injured or anything like that. He's got his helmet on standing right behind the coach's hat coaching staff and, Jay, and Mason Roberts has done a good job of throwing strikes since he's gotten in he fumbled the, that one snap but that was it third down and seven play fake to Obi Amin. it is Mason Roberts stumbles a bit knee was down and so too did the ball come out but he'll be ruled down at the 46 so an interesting play call facing Trent Faith his offensive coordinator Curtis Neal on fourth down and about four from the Tiger 44. I don't think his knee was down. No, I don't think it was either, but he did a good job of riding his... Uh, oh, there it was. I saw the right, right knee. one. Yeah, the right knee was down. He did a good job of riding his back and then pulling the ball out and seeing and reading that play. Punt team comes out, and that's Nate German's responsibility, so he comes out to execute the punt. Clock moving, 7.40 to play. Here in quarter number four, 28-14 Tigers. Nobody back for Klein Collins, oh. and the ball rolls in to the end zone. 41-yard punt, 21 yards net. Ball will come back out to the 20. So I was did a good job of actually getting down the field. It just the ball just kind of took a you know a bad bounce, but they did a good job of covering downfield. Now do you think that if this is not week zero, if we're in a dis district game here? Think Nate German's on the sidelines? No, no way. Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center is a production of the Legacy Sports Network. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or any other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Legacy Sports Network and Fox Sports Southwest is strictly prohibited. This game is being directed by Matt Broussard and produced by Ryan Barton. Our technical crew, Jeff Slahetka and Kelly Carlquist, the executive producer of the Legacy Sports Network, is Jim Barton. 28-14, Klein Collins. They'll start on their own 20 and out of the flex bone, a play fake. Jackson's going to go deep. And he's got a man, and it's Mikey Tanner at midfield into Wildcat territory and down at the 46-yard line. Tackle down on the play. It seemed like that play took a while to develop because Mikey got open pretty quickly. Jordan Thomas was open deeper down the field. They both had to pull up and wait for the ball to get to him. They didn't know who he was going to, really. 33 yards on the pass play. That's six points if he hits them in stride. Oh, yeah. Either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> 16 first downs for Klein Collins tonight. Hand off to Bishop. Rumbles his way through the middle. Looked like the ball came loose. Officials really have to get in that pile so that nobody gets hurt. Can only imagine what happens down there. Ah, uh, most likely. <laughs> you would know. You're the only one of us that would know. Good job of getting the ball back. Yeah, indeed. Klein Collins will keep it. Continue to work clock off the uh, scoreboard here. Try to claim a 28-14 win here in week zero. It didn't look pretty for him. Back in the first half, it's looked infinitely better here in the second 24 minutes. Second down and eight for the Tigers. They'll scrimmage from the Wildcat 45. White, the motion man, gets the pitch. Good block. And White across the 40, juking his way out of bounds as he's tackled by DeAndre Davis. And then he puts a little extra push into White and draws a penalty flag. Trey White has done a great job, especially the second half of just moving the ball, following his blocks. I mean, and he's so he can he's so quick, he can cut on a dime because these blocks aren't the, they're not the huge blocks. You know, they're just getting in front of him and he's making a great cut. Hey guys, I'm not sure if y'all can see that, but the flag was thrown after Davis got up after tackling uh, Trey White. He kind of shoved him back down to the ground. And right. That's the reason for the flag. Hey, I think he was trying to help himself up. You know, they said that uh, it was a little chippy in pregame. There was a lot of smack talk between the two teams, and they're just trying to uh, get control of the game so it doesn't get out of hand here in the last closing minutes. 
You know, that's one thing I just never liked about, you know, sports and, and, and I don't know why you just can't be civilized. I mean, I, I, it's, it's so unnecessary to talk noise and talk trash. Just, just play hard. Play well. Pick up somebody. Pick them up after you tackle them. If you play well on the field, that's all the noise. That's all you need. That you need. Yeah, it's some people you get in their head, and they don't play well if you start talking noise. Which, whatever. Jared Huber, the backup get. quarterback, in motion to the left side, handoff, and fair. Will be taken down at the 16-yard line, gaining two. And Klein Collins, I mean, they just continue to do a great job of managing the clock moving the ball, chipping away, getting one big play here, one big play there. Cy Woods will take a timeout, stopping the clock with 6.04 to play here in tonight's game. It is 28-14, Klein Collins here at BBVA Compass Stadium. Saturday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. It was captured at a local grocery store. This man just took money from his bank that wasn't in his account. Did you catch it? Let's see that again. There, he just got 10 cents back for every $10 or more purchase on his debit card with cashback counts checking from Community Bank. Imagine a bank that actually pays you to use your debit card. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. Tigers on top, 28-14. Michael Silvers, Brent Moody, Jarrell Branch, Jay Darneal. Josh Parrison on the Klein Collins sideline. Getting his left leg stretched out. I'm sure he'll be re-entering very soon. Trey White in as a running back. Slightly behind the quarterback, Blake Jackson, out of the pistol. And a pitch left. Trey White looking to get to the edge. He'll get a first down as he has run out of bounds. Alfred Pullum leading the way defensively for the Wildcats, but it should be enough for another Tiger first down, and it is inside the 10 at the eight yard line. It'll be first and goal. I don't know about you guys, but might have taken an injury for Trey White to get his playing time, but I think he's playing his way into the starting role. Oh, most definitely, and this is what these type of games are for. I mean, you're literally fighting for position. Cy Woods will be idle next week, and then they're at the district play. That's how it is in District 17-5A. One non-district game, and then you're into district play. And they'll start off with Langham Creek, losing in overtime last night, 63-56 to Klein Oak. Jackson on first and goal. On a keeper, down to the two. Pick up a six yards for the quarterback, Blake Jackson, who has a rushing touchdown. That came back in the first half. This keeper has really been working a lot for uh, Klein Collins, and it, he's just been making it right up the middle, hitting, you know, going through these little small holes, and he's really, really athletic. But it's just it makes me nervous when he has the ball because it's week zero. <laughs> well, yeah, and Jared Huber's like, yeah, keep running that one where he gets hit <laughs> three times. <laughs> so another timeout taken by Cy Woods for Klein Collins. One more non-district game for them, and that's on the road next week at Thorn Stadium against Eisenhower. Then on the 13th of September, they begin District 13-5A action against Westfield. Westfield made it all the way to the Region 2 championship game last season, losing to in-school district rival DeCaney on a very windy day at Turner Stadium in Humble. We were there. Yeah, that was a, that was a crazy game. I mean, the, the wind was – it was it – was, it was uncanny how windy it was. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes weather is the one thing you remember most yeah, about a game. That's right. You know, the fog bowl, the ice bowl, <laughs> the wind bowl, I guess, for the Region 2 championship game a season ago. Second down and goal for the Tigers, certainly trying to put this one away. 543 remaining here in the fourth quarter from BBVA Compass Stadium. Bishop is the running back. And out of the shotgun, and out of the pistol is Jackson. He hands it off to Bishop. Bishop is in. Touchdown. Tiger, touchdown. 
Bishop from three yards out puts this one away for the Klein Collins Tigers. So I always did a good job of converging on that ball, but just the momentum of Bishop and, and you know, he continued to churn his legs, was able to get him into the end zone. The Cywoods defense had been on the field a long time. Rhett Peterson connects on the extra point, but there is a flag down. It was a 7-0 game at halftime. The lead belonged to the Klein Collins Tigers. It is now 35-14 Klein Collins. Running into the kicker is called by a referee, Scott Peterson. Or Scott Johnson, I should say. My apologies to Mr. Johnson. Our champion Chevrolet players of the game for the Klein Collins Tigers, the combination of Josh Parrison and Trey White. And for the Cywoods Cy Woods Wildcats, E.B. Obiaman and Sam Stewart. With these achievements, a contribution is made to BBVA Compass Dynamo Stadium in recognition of our champion Chevrolet players of the game. You know, Cy Woods should look at this game and say they really improved in the second half. They went in halftime, they made the proper adjustments, but... It just wasn't enough against right. Klein you know, Collins. Klein was a little Collins. too much. Right. But it's, they're really two tails, you know, they look like two different teams, you know, in the first half and the second half. So they should be proud of what they've done in the second half, how they start to put things together. Not sure why they took out Nathan or Nate German. Nate German. Yeah, yeah. Just probably give uh, Mason Roberts another chance, you know, a chance he here was, in a non-district game. But Nate German was getting hot. Yeah. You know, and that's something that is just kind of odd to see. So I don't know what happened there. Well, the Wildcats get the benefit of an off week next week, and then they'll wrap up this 2000 season with nine straight district games. And this is one of those districts where you can't really win one, lose one. You need to try to get hot. That's right. Because this, uh, this, this, uh, this district, 17-5A, is one of the highly competitive games, one of the most highly competitive districts in all the greater Houston area. Yeah, and if you let a game slip, that you'll let a playoff position slip. They just beat up on each other. Like, the main thing is to come out of district healthy to be able to, to compete in the playoffs coming out of there. In recent memory, only one 17-5A school has made it to the state championship game, and that was back in 2006 when Cy Falls defeated Katie in the region three championship game, then defeated San Antonio MacArthur before losing to Cedar Hill in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. He had a couple of good runs by Cy Fair with Sam McGuffey. But the damage that these teams inflict on each other in, st in, in the season does kind of take its toll when you get to the playoffs. I mean, it's no small feat to win a state championship. Right. I mean, it takes a special team to do it. Right, yeah, you have to have a lot of chemistry. You know, you guys have to be playing on all, cylinder, all cylinders and just really have the momentum that you need. Here's a quick pass. Nate German back in the game, completes to Mason Roberts to the 33-yard line, eight yards on the pass play. That's a great play call. I mean, he's just wide open out there toward the sideline. Good throw by Nate German. Nice little drop back. If you go back to the first half, he's now completed eight straight. Fires to the right side, caught, and that is Obi Amin. Obi Amin will get a first down to the 39. Six yards on that completion. Yeah, we could probably could have thrown uh, Derek Thomas and numerous guys on the defense and on the player yeah. of the game. Yeah, they're, they're Derek Thomas had a heck of a game. German on first down, fires Got over him. the middle, and is caught by Hooper deep in the Tiger territory at the 25-yard line. I don't know. 36 what, yards on the pass play. Nate German came out this second half just throwing strikes. Look at that right there. Well, they've just been sending so much pressure, and if you can – Keep him up on his feet, give him a little bit of time. These wide receivers are getting past the DBs, especially down the middle of the field. Quick strike, slot man with his knee down, Mason Roberts to the 18 yard line for seven yards. 
they're doing a good job of just moving the ball very, very quickly, running a small, you know, little two-minute offense. Over the middle, that one batted down by Christian Snow. Third down for Cy Woods. Yeah, Nate German didn't see Christian Snow coming across the middle. He was kind of hiding down there. Looked like he had a lane there for a hot second. Sometimes those linebackers kind of Looks like Christian Snow kind of backed off the line a little bit. Third down. Short yardage situation. German throws. And that one oh. dropped by Obi Amin at the first down marker. Well, he knew he was uh, going to get the first down if he hauled that one in. Was and thinking about the yards after the catch. Yeah, didn't knowing make him, the didn't catch. So. Yeah, because. Wow. I mean, as soon as he it touched him, he popped his head up. Fourth down, Wildcats will obviously go for it. Nate German seems to be making an audible at the line. Calls his own number. Keeps it himself and will be stopped short of the first down marker. And a turnover on downs, stopping the clock with 424 remaining. You're going to call for a measurement, I think, but I don't. And we'll see if the first teamers come out to wrap this one up or if we see some of the backups now for Klein Collins as they have a 21 point edge. Looks like the first teamers are out there. There's Jordan Thomas, Blake Jackson, Pearson. Pearson did so much in this game, it's not going to show up on the stat sheets. All of his blocks down the field. Yeah. Did a great job. He did a lot that will show up. He caught the ball himself. You call in timeout, you don't have any more. Pearson has a. Touchdown catch, a 90-yard kickoff returned for a touchdown. Kind of neat, that guy. Trey White, listed as a backup, came in, filling in for Marcus Goodson. And, and that rotation of running backs, over 100 yards and a touchdown, eight carries, 124 yards. I guess to our best stat-keeping ability, at least. <laughs> We're generally pretty close. We may I be am off a few always yards. accurate. <laughs> no week zero uh, for you, huh? No. Right. I was practicing in the uh, spring games. Oh, is that right? <laughs> well, you know, this is um, <laughs> seven on seven. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good note to mention that this is year number ten for Brent and myself, and year number five with yeah. uh, with Jarrell. Under center in a flex bone formation, and Jer uh, excuse me, uh, Jeremy Fair is stopped for a yard loss. So, isn't that supposed to be a penalty if you call a timeout? You don't have. I, th I think so. It is, it is, it is basketball. <laughs> That's Chris <laughs> Weber. Oh, man. Come on. It's week zero for the referees, too. I think the ref walked out there. Is it just go? Just let it, yeah. 35-14, let's, let's get out of here. I guess it could be worse. Yeah. That replacement officials. Oh, Minute Maid could be gracious. filled because we had a good product and then there'd be traffic getting out of here. <laughs> That's funny. Second down and 11. Pitch to Trey White, and he's going to lose some yardage. Blow the whistle. Stopped at the 14. The ball eventually comes loose. That's, but that's because of Ford progress, and finally Trey White's like, all right, I'll, I'll get I'll, – here's the ball. Stop wasting time. That's one thing that I, I wanted to, to comment about earlier on the uh, eliminating contact in the uh, kicking game and the return game. I think they need to be quicker to to whistle people dead. No. I think that causes <laughs> well, it really causes delay a game as well, and you can get injured. Yeah, I mean that's that's something that you want to try to avoid as much as possible. It's just like concussions, as we were talking about earlier. I've been looking at that, and I thought about like how, you know, as football players, we all played football, but they they taught us how to hit a certain way, right? Right. They've really had Face to. Face up. Yeah, and you are always looking to see what you're going to hit, right? And you because, look at the chest. Right, and what they try to prevent you from hurting your neck. Right. They never said anything about your brain, nothing about concussions, nothing like that. So really, you have to reteach the game, and they're going to have to really do this across, you know, from Pee Wee on up. Well, yeah, and everyone's the game. sitting there watching people get these million dollar checks for blowing someone up with a big hit, but. <laughs> I mean, at what risk sometimes, exactly. you know? It, it's amazing how concussions have really played a part in, in 
the way people have, have begun to live their lives and their psyche, dementia, all those type of things, depression. Right, and, and one of the things that you even hear from former NFL players is that they wouldn't even recommend their children to play football. Right. Some, some of them. Yeah, a lot of and them say, you know, I don't, want, I don't even want them to play. And that's amazing because that's how they've, they've made a living. And uh, it, it's just something that this game is going to have to evolve and they're going to have to change the way it's played. Well, I've discussed it with Mike a few times because he's a Niners fan, but <laughs> I saw an interview with uh, Joe Montana. He's like, look, y'all want to slow the game down? Take the face masks off. <laughs> yeah. That's they a fact. <laughs> <laughs> even though when you look at the old footage, when look. you look at old footage of the uh, the face mask without it, mm -hmm. it seems like they go so much faster. <laughs> I don't know if it's the film, <laughs> I think it's but the every film, time man. you watch, yeah. it looks like they just run uh, just so much faster <laughs> than what you see today. But Everybody says the game is faster now than it's ever been. I mean, that's it's true. You take the face mask off, you're not going to see that type stuff. Third down and 11 yards to go for Klein Collins. A low snap and a handoff to Bishop. Wow. Bishop to the 20 and Bishop across the 25 out to the 27-yard line. Bishop is not a little kid. I mean, At all. He is that, I, want, I want him to be more... Demonstrative when he's when he's running. I want him to lower the boom. He looks like, he looks like he's trying to run around people. Nick Satlos on the tackle. It's going to be enough for a first down on the 11-yard pickup for Bishop. That gives him 42 yards on 11 carries and a touchdown tonight. He's the uh, transfer from California. Yes, sir. They hit a little harder in Texas. <laughs> I never forget, man. We had this kid transfer from California, and he came into practice and. He had just won like a national championship in high school or whatever, and he had twisted his ankle, and we just left him on the sideline because we had to keep practicing. He right. didn't know what was going on because he's such a superstar and such a diva in California. We don't play that in Texas. We keep First down and 10. <laughs> Shotgun for Jackson. Three minutes to go here at BBVA Compass Stadium. It is Fair who takes it up the middle, takes it out to the 30. Once and a gain again. of four yards for Fair. Making the most of his opportunities to carry the ball. I don't believe Fair has a negative carry on the game. He doesn't. 56 yards on eight rushes for Fair. He one of the six ball handlers in the rushing game tonight for Klein Collins. Passes complete to five different Tiger receivers. Thomas, Harrison, Tanner, Goodson, and Edmonds. It wasn't always pretty in the first half, but Blake Jackson has peppered the ball around to his receivers. And also the second half, this game has really cleaned up. You've seen a lot less penalties, a lot less, a lot fewer mistakes. Good run. Fair across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Gain of 13 Fair. yards. And Jeremy Fair with another Tiger first down. He did a good job of just reading his blocks, and as soon as he saw the hole, he just exploded through there. And because of his size, he's hard to take down. You really have to put a, well, a helmet on it, but I hate to say that. <laughs> Don't forget, coming up next week, Thursday Night Football, presented by Texas Emergency Care Center from George Stadium in spring. The 0-1 Spring Lions play host to the 1-0 Deer Park Deer. We're live on Fox Sports Southwest next Thursday at 645. Hand off to Jeremy Fair. Fair across the 45, tackled at the 46. Three more yards to tack on his night. Jeremy Fair now across the 70-yard mark for 72 yards on 10 rushes. And we'll check out of the lineup. And Klein Collins is really trying to run out the rest of this clock, not really trying to do too much. Just keep the chain moving, keep the clock running. But they've done a good job this whole second half with this clock management. I mean, they've driven the ball down the field, and then when they needed something big, they did it. This is Bishop. And on second down, Bishop near midfield. And I still like the fire that I see from Cy Woods. They're still flying to the ball. They're still, you know, trying to, trying to make something happen even though they're, they're down. Yeah, yeah, you don't go out there and hit somebody now. You might have, not have the opportunity to hit someone next week. Somebody might take your spot if you're not out there trying. Jackson with a touchdown run of three yards and a touchdown pass of eight yards to Parison. 
How would you assess his night as the quarterback as victory formation is called for by uh, Klein Collins to run this one out, final play of the game, but how would you assess young Blake Jackson, senior, came up from the varsity, or junior varsity last season, overtook Jared Huber as the number one quarterback of this varsity team, and on his debut, he leads his team to victory, 35-14. I, I, excuse me, all I see is confidence. He just bruised confidence as if he knew that he was going to go out there and he was going to lead his team to victory. Well, he managed the game well. He didn't, he didn't try to do too much himself. He let the playmakers around him, got the ball into their hands, let them do all the work, and he just went out there and managed the game and brought home a victory for his team. But also, you kind of got to play with a little bit of confidence the way that his defense came out and really had the offenses back in that first half. They really came out and really broke up anything Cy Woods was trying to do, which makes it a lot easier for your offense to start rolling. And Cy Woods, they were shut out in the first 24 minutes, came back in the second half, scored 14 points. Some things to build on. They have an extra week as they're off yeah. next week as they prepare for Langham Creek in two weeks. Yeah, they executed very well in the second half. Looked like they were able to go inside of halftime, get their mind, collect themselves, and they came out and they played such a better game. But then also they took out Nate German, so it kind of threw some things off. I'm kind of confused by that because he was getting into a solid rhythm, and then they took him out of the game for a couple possessions. Exactly. I think they made excellent adjustments at halftime. They uh, went to a, a quick three-step drop, let Nate, Nate German get the ball out of his hands, and he wasn't spending a lot of time on his butt or on his back. And then, uh, like you said, they uh, they went to the backup quarterback, and, and that's where I think Klein Collins kind of took control of the game. And also, I guess it's no, no better time to see what your second-string quarterback can do, you know, Nothing like week zero to do that. So We're standing by with Jay Darnell down on the field to grab a couple of interviews from the Klein Collins side, especially with Coach Drew Sabota. I think he's going to be looking for Trey White and Josh Pearson. And we've got an eye on Jay, so as soon as he can grab one of them, might be after they have their traditional end of uh, game meeting. You know, Trey White just had a really, really great game tonight for him not to start. You know, he came in, and every time he, he got the ball, he took advantage of that opportunity. And that's just, you know, every player's got to – you have to have that type of mentality. And, and just does whatever is required of him. He, like I said, he played defense last year, two interceptions, playing on the offensive side this year. If they need him to, they can throw him out there defensively in the defensive backfield. They looked kind of sketchy at times, deep <laughs> down the middle, but – Trey White just does whatever is required of him. While we have a moment, let's go ahead and step aside. When we return, we will have our post-game coverage. And our post-game show will be brought to you by Metter Staffing Services. Final statistics, analysis, interviews, and more. Plus, we'll take a look at next week's game between Deer Park and Spring. It comes your way next on the Metter Staffing Services post-game show. Final score, Klein Collins 35-14 over Cy Woods. As one of the largest temporary health divisions in the Houston area. Each week, the company pays over 2,000 temporaries, working on many and varied assignments. Metter Staffing can help your company when you have needs for your employees. Call us at 713-941-0616 to speak with one of our experienced staffing consultants who can assist you with your staffing challenges. That number is 713-941-0616. They now offer video resumes as a job-seeking tool. Ask about it today. Metter Staffing. They know the people you need to know. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. You a fanatic? Open a Texans checking account with First Community Credit Union and you could win a trip to the big game in New Orleans. Just visit TexansChecking.com and open your account. Signing up is easy and free. You'll get a customized Texans debit card. And best of all, you could win a trip to New Orleans for the big game or other great prizes like trips to Texans road games and the 2013 draft in New York City. Be a fanatic. Visit TexansChecking.com and sign up for your chance to win. First Community Credit Union, the official credit union of the Houston Texans. How about an L? Bigger. No, no, no. Bigger still. Ah. It's good to be king. 
This fall, experience king-size dining, shopping, merriment, and more at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Discount tickets are on sale now at Randall's, Walgreens, Wood Forest National Bank, and online at TexasRenVest.com. The Texas Renaissance Festival. Choose your own adventure. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Welcome into the Metter Staffing Services post-game show. Final score from BBVA Compass Stadium, 35-14. Klein Collins defeats Cy Woods. A couple of offensive standouts are standing by down on the field with Jay Darneal. That's right, Michael. I'm joined by Trey White and Josh Pearson over here. First, uh, let's talk to uh, Trey White. Trey, you had a couple of guys in front of you on the depth chart. You used to play defense, and you got 125 yards and a couple of scores. Talk us through that. I mean... I started off at corner and I went to running back a few days before this game and I mean I just did what I could and that's all I have to say. How special is it in this first game, this stadium, to have a performance like that? I mean this is a big game. Everybody came out here to see us win. I mean that's what we did. It's a, it's a great win. Congratulations on the success and, and hopefully you carry it through the season. Yes sir, thank you. Okay, now we have uh, Josh Pearson here, JP. Um, Josh. He had a terrific game, the kickoff return, receiving the ball, rushing the football. You, you could do it all, can't you? Uh, yes, sir, I can, but that fumble I had on the kickoff return, you know, I got to get that fixed. But I did my thing, and luckily I got into the end zone, which was very cool. And running the ball, you know, I'm very, I got, I'm an opt opportunist, you know, I take what I can get. So, <laughs> Coming into this game, is, is that something that you thought was going to happen? You were going to have some open looks? Uh, yes, sir, yeah. Uh, coach told me that I was going to be playing a lot of positions, so. Yeah, do my thing. Hey, congratulations on, on the game, buddy. Uh, thank you. <laughs> guys, back up to you. All right, Jay, thank you very, very much, <laughs> sir. A couple of guys with, uh, <laughs> they've got great words. They're, 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 they're players with few words. He's, right. a humble, he's a humble dude. Uh, <laughs> like, well, you was, know what I liked about that? I was I'll just doing you. my thing. <laughs> but what I liked the most about it was he identified his miscue. Yeah, and said exactly. he's got to work First, on it. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, i got to work on that. But other than but that, he I didn't, he didn't mention what he, what he, he did awesome. best. He didn't mention his blocking, his blocking at all. Yeah. He was it, like they did not have the points that they scored oh, tonight no. without and, his blocking and, downfield. You know what? Yeah, because Trey wouldn't have been able to make those cuts, and especially Trey just said they put him at at running back a couple days ago. Two days ago. <laughs> Two days ago, and you did this. That just goes to show you how athletic these kids are. All right. When we look at we look we see the final score. It's on the screen, 35-14. Let's keep in mind, folks, it was seven yeah. nothing. At the end of the first half, Klein Collins had the lead. They muffed the opening kickoff. Cy Woods had it on the 15. They score 7-7. Seven, seven. They went down the field, Klein Collins, 14-7. Then Cy Woods came back, 14-14. And then Klein Collins took control, winning 35-14. Talked about it at the tail end of the game. A lot of positives yeah. to build on. And for Cy Woods, they get an extra week prepared for district play because it's a quick turnaround from non-district to district for the teams of 17-5A. They should have some success. Just got to shore up some things. Yeah, Cy Woods is going to be good, but it's always going to be a little adjustment, especially when you have a brand new coach. You want to try to fill out your players. He wasn't here last year. He doesn't know exactly what all he has because everything changes once you get out on the field. And I think if they can just run with an offense where they're quick to the line, get Nate German a little three-step drop, get the ball out of his hands, unless you have a great cover team, Nate German's going to move the ball against you. It's just, it's just fact. And I think when they went away from that is when they kind of lost this game. But Klein Collins did what they had to do to win it. Let's run down some of the particulars, uh, some of the leaders tonight. For uh, Klein Collins, Blake Jackson was 12 of 21 in the air, 135 yards and a touchdown pass. Trey White, you mentioned in his interview, he mentioned in the interview, he was only installed as a running back a couple of days ago before this game. Nine carries, 121 yards and a mm. touchdown. Josh Pearson, four catches, 33 yards, a touchdown, two carries with the football, 42 yards. The 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Klein Collins winning 35-14. On the other side, from the Cy Woods perspective, 
Nate German, 20 of 29, 158 yards and a touchdown. Sam Stewart carried the ball nine times for 49 yards, had seven catches for 51 yards and a touchdown. And Ebi Obiamen, three carries, 64 yards and a touchdown. And just another note on German, he completed his last, I'm counting, <laughs> forgive me. He completed his last 11 passes. And that goes back to the end of the first half. I mean, 20 at 29 is, is not a bad day at all, especially for for what he was what was th being thrown at him in, in the first half. Yeah, especially for as much as he spent the first half running for his life, the front seven for Klein Collins was in the backfield immediately. And yeah, let's let's, let's itemize uh, Derek Thomas because oh, yeah. during that first half he was he really was pressuring. Uh, yeah, he was everywhere. German. And Cy Woods made an adjustment you didn't hear from too much in the second half. Yeah, it, it was just one of those things where they just got it together. They keyed in on the, the areas that they need to key in. They just need to start blocking and moving their feet and doing what they knew how to do. I th think the majority of it had to do with getting Nate German in a three-step drop and getting the ball out. They didn't have enough time to get back there to him anymore. All right, next week, Thursday Night Football presented by Texas Emergency Care Center. We come your way from George Stadium up in spring. Another 13-5A team we'll see as the Spring Lions host the Deer Park Deer. Spring losing to Manville coming up from the 4A classification. They lose 35-21 uh, while Deer Park get on the uh, go on the road for the second consecutive week. They win last night 29-6 over Clear Lake. Should be a good one with the Deer and the Lions. Looking forward to that one. Uh, always good to see, you know, the beginning of the season to see how people make adjustments after week zero and go into week one. Want to see who is healthy, who's not, and uh, – you know, see the proper adjustments. Well, yeah, and you really get a chance to see those guys that kind of played their way, played into a new role in that Week Zero game and see what kind of roles and, uh, and who's going to come out and really put the team on their shoulders and, uh, and take them into the district campaigns. Week Zero comes all the way around and goes full circle. If it's on the football field, if it's the officials, if it's the broadcasters and the production crew, he can only go up. That's going to wrap it up here from BBVA Compass Stadium here in Houston. It's the finale of the BBVA Compass Kickoff Classic. And tonight, the Klein Collins Tigers defeat the Cy Woods Wildcats. Final score, 35 to 14. For Brent Moody, Andrew L. Branch, Jade Arneal on the field and our entire crew, Michael Silver saying so long from Houston.